Blackbusters. Whoo! What's cracking, family? What's happening, man? We are back. This is Blackbusters, the best movie review podcast in the world. In the world, yes, Craig. Yes, in the world, world Craig. Man, mm-hmm. this is another special day, man. An- another, woo we. Here we go. We are here. I'm your, I'm your host, Big Ja, and this is my co-host, Ice Tone. Ice Tone. <laughs> yes. Ice Tone. Ice Tone. Uh huh. Without the curl. <laughs> Without the curl. Yeah. Woo. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I'm leaning curl? in. Yeah. Right now. Woo. If I had had the curl wig, it'd be oh, dripping man. too. <laughs> Speaking be of such, too. I still we should have had the curl wigs, mm-hmm. man. I gotta start, man. I'm slipping. Yeah. But y'all see what I got on my chest. But before we get to that, we have a special guest, man. Yes, we do. Um, I I want uh, to me, this guy is here because when I do my films and my projects, and the projects are kind of based around hood stuff and inner city men navigating through the city and in the world yeah hush and you gotta have dope ass performers Mm -hmm. you gotta have guys whether they are these street dudes or not guys that can you know really pull off the characters i watched this movie and i'm like okay i love the cast i'll give you my my take on it i'm I'm, i know i'm long-winded before i tell you tell people who you are Mm -hmm. but uh you're here because this movie is dope as hell. I was a kid watching it, and I love the acting. And um, I when I do this again, I might not do this film. Obviously, I'm not gonna do Boys in the Hood, right? But I'm gonna I'm gonna do other films, bro. And you got to be a part of it. Damn, that's you know what I'm saying. Nah, mm-hmm. man, um, you are literally one of my favorite actors to work with, bro. Damn. Uh, nah, and I'm not just saying that. I promise you, bro. I've talked about you before behind yeah. your back Damn. about how dope of an artist you are with this with this acting, man. And um. It's a joy to work with you all the time, bro. My boy Anthony Derail. Yes, thank sir. You. Anthony thank Derail, man. Thank you, man. Uh, thank you. Thank thank you man. for blessing us with this with this uh, opportunity to do this movie, Boys in the Hood. Yes, sir. Damn, what an honor. Yes, indeed, bro. Um, it's important that I, I I I do this film, and to do it with you is dope because I, when I think of um this film, Boys in the Hood, it's more than just a movie. It's more like the backstory to it. This is mm-hmm. film. This is a film. Written, directed by John Singleton, the late great John mm-hmm. Singleton. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I never got to meet him, bro, and that's a tragedy. I've always wanted to. I always knew that I was going to meet him one day, and to tell him, along with everybody who's told and him, I can lie with y'all too would be phenomenal. Oh man, yeah. it would have been great, man. Um, <clears throat> uh, but the fact that we're doing this film is important to me because he was twenty four years old, yeah. I believe, when he made this film. Yeah. That I did not know. Mm-hmm. He was and a out the park. Out the park. This is his first film. 24 yeah. years old? Come on, bro. Yeah. yeah. 1991. Mm-hmm. Student 91. of the game. I was 10 years old. Yeah. And he was a student of the game. He went to USC. USC and he graduated mm-hmm. from USC Film School. And he wrote this film. And uh, now, mind you, this is this is what I've heard and what I've read, interviews and stuff like that. Like he wasn't, He was trying to sell it. I was trying to get it made, and they mm. wanted to buy it from him. He wasn't trying to sell it. He was right, trying. Right. They were trying to buy it from him. Mm. He was twenty one, I think, mm-hmm. or twenty two. And, and a lot did. of cats that age probably would have sold, which is of crazy. course yeah, for a hundred thousand yeah. dollars. I think. Oh yeah. But this was back his, then. That was back then. This, 90, yeah. this is yeah. 89, 90, 91. Yeah. This was and his baby. He, he believed in his in this baby of his that he wanted to do it himself, and he's a new, a first time writer, first time director, young dude. They were like, "Yeah, we're not going to have you let you do this," and. I forget the lady's name, but um, he 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 has someone helping him, like a consultant. To help Baby girl navigate. from Columbia. Yes. Mm. Yeah. Navigate through the business part of it, and he ended up being able to get the money to do it, do it this film himself. If someone else did this film, it wouldn't have been this. No. No. Oh, yeah. Not at all. I. No. I. Well, we don't know what it would have been, but it wouldn't have been this. It would have been worse than this. <laughs> I was yeah. just talking to my friend uh, last night about how who directs the movie definitely makes the movie as well, and mm-hmm. that vision. Uh, like when Bad Boys changed versus when Michael Bay was shooting it versus mm-hmm. versus now. Right. So yeah, it definitely would have been a different Boys in the Hood. Yeah, you know, sure. they probably wouldn't even have the Z in the title. Would have been Boys. With yes, the mm-hmm. you know Boys in the City. Yeah, mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> young men in the inner city. <laughs> Goofy shit like that. Man, <laughs> Boys in the Hood, written directed by John Singleton, um, starring Cuba Gooden Jr., Lawrence Fishburne, and Ice Cube. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Morris Chestnut. Yeah, Lawrence Fishburne, Angela mm-hmm. Bassett, Angela Bassett, Regina Neil King, Long. Regina King, Neil Long. Come on, come man. on, man. Stop playing. It's like an ensemble cast before In they blew up. Regina King, yes. Regina King, yeah, yes. That, oh, I you forgot. calling that bitch? Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. 
Bro, this movie is in 1991. It was it was it was released in 1991. Um and the main character is Cuba Gooding Jr.'s character. His name is Trey. Mm-hmm. Um, and the movie starts off with him being like, what, 10 years old? Yeah. yeah, You know, middle school or elementary, I'm sorry. Right. Probably sixth, seventh, sixth grade. And he's uh, walking through the city, well, on his way to school, and he's uh, with his friends. And he, he walk, walks by a crime scene. But we, 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 it's, it's so many things to talk about with this, with this film because as a filmmaker myself, this is one of the films that influenced me to do what I do. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, it made me want to be an actor. It made me want to be a filmmaker. It made me want to tell stories, yeah. you know what I'm saying, that I can relate to. And I can relate to this film 100%. It's probably the most relatable film to me that I've ever seen. Mm, um, same. It's the first, same. for me, this movie... Uh, Cause I'd have been like maybe eleven or mm-hmm. or, or twelve when it came out. Mm-hmm. This movie was the first movie made for adults that impacted me as a Big kid. Big facts, yeah. right? Big facts. It like, wasn't for kids. Yeah, yeah it wasn't. But for it was kids. for kids. Like when, yeah. like when E. T. went home, I felt some kind of way. Right. Mm-hmm. But that was like the ceiling of like right. what I was like able to feel emotionally. When the Goonies got away, yeah. I felt something. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Boys in the Hood is the first time that like. Because we went as a family, right? Even though this movie is not really appropriate for mm-hmm. kids, but everybody was going. People was getting out of church and going to see Boys in the Hood. Right, man. And, you know, it was set in the neighborhood that I grew up in. So everything was familiar. Everything. Um, it just was, even, even, I've seen this movie maybe a hundred times. Facts. And every, and every time I watch it, it elicits an emotional response from me. Same. Every Same. single Same. time. I know exactly what's going to happen, yes. but every time I watch this movie, it just pulls it out of me. I don't it's get that bored. Good. I've never turned this film off. Nope. Yeah. I've never saw it on and it switched. Oh, of course. You know what I'm saying? Me personally, mm-hmm. I've never done that. Um, this movie is relatable. The thing, the difference is I, I wasn't able to watch this film. My mom wouldn't, wouldn't let me see this in the theater at all. Uh, I have older brothers. I have an older brother that had it on VHS, mm-hmm. and I, I watched it at his house mm-hmm. on his big screen, mm-hmm. on his the big the big tube, yeah, yeah. the big ass uh, screen the TV, box. the big the big ass box. Yeah, <laughs> gr- you talking about the ground model? The ground model mm-hmm. had wheels. You push it. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. You know what I'm saying? And uh, I watched it at his house, and I was so happy to watch this film because my mom would let me see it. Everybody at school had seen it already. I'm mad, mm. and my mom was my mom was the type of mom that. Wouldn't let, my mom wasn't the young mom that uh, she wasn't an older the old lady, but she wasn't mm-hmm, a woman. Right. I, I was the kid that went to church. I was the only kid on my block that went to church. Mm-hmm. So I was teased like, man, we can't play with John. <laughs> so he came home from church. Yeah, right, right, right. I get home from church. Everybody in the, in the block running around playing tired up, uh, double already dirty. And stuff. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, already sweating and dirty. <laughs> got stains dirty. and shit. Got Chico yeah. six stains mm-hmm. all over his shirt. <laughs> I'm mean, I'm driving by and they're like, hurry up and get me. Yeah, so yeah. I get out, I run to the house, take my clothes off, take them pants off, and yeah. put my my street clothes on. Yeah. Memories, dog. Yep. Yeah. yeah. So I was the dude. I was Trey, bro. I was Trey for sure. Mm-hmm. I was the one that had the had the. I've been in everybody's house on my block. Mm-hmm. It's none of the houses were as peaceful as mine. Yeah. Yeah. And you know what I'm saying and in. I live with my mom initially. My parents divorced when I was seven, and we moved to that neighborhood when I was seven years old. And the first. Within the first twenty five minutes of us of us getting there and me going outside, my nose is busted mm-hmm. and I'm fighting. Bro, I'm, I'm sorry, I, 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 man. It was Jump the same in. thing when we, when we moved to Compton. Me and my brother, we moved to Compton, and we stayed in a in a little cul de sac area. And I went to Carver Elementary for a while. Mm-hmm. And literally the first day we moved in, me and my brother had to run outside on, and, and run inside, and we had to. Uh, the the football shaped toy box, mm-hmm. you remember that one yeah, uh, from, yeah. from uh, Fisher Price? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And we had to go in there and grab our hockey sticks because they they lined up on the grass for us. You know what I'm saying? We was the new kids in the neighborhood. Oh, and yeah. it was pressing. So yeah. I feel like I was more so Doe and Trey because when we lived in Manwood, it was different because it was so everywhere. It was so accessible. Mm-hmm. All of my right. uncles and aunties and right. is, is is beer being spilled. It's gold bangles. It's gold yeah. teeth. It's cuz. It's cuz mm-hmm. that. It's, it's dice right. games. Homies fighting. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like that's that was the norm. We running around. We playing around that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Cigarette burns on the hand. Like yeah. you know, it was normal. Yep. Yep. Takes his cap full of beer. It was normal. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so see, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And some, some might like it. You know what I'm saying? Right, right, you right. got some little kids they throwing up the hood. But me, like you said with the tray and the dough, it was I, I tried that lifestyle that was the dough with me but the tray I was always like I want something more and something better yeah, and something different so, so yeah it, it, like you said it evokes that kind of so emotion like, yeah yeah, uh, yeah. and a lot chills. of like, man so a lot of uh, 
So Trey is a uh, Trey. He leaves his neighborhood. He gets in trouble at school, mm-hmm. and his mom said, "I told you, if you if if you get in trouble again, I'm speaking to, to your dad. dad." Yeah. And so I was in the ninth, eighth grade. I was in eighth grade, and um, I got kicked and suspended. And I got in trouble with the neighborhood that we moved into. Mm-hmm. I grew up on the on the west side, 94th and Vermont. Mm-hmm. And then we moved to the east side, 54th and Compton Ave. Damn. And for a young 12-year-old, 13-year-old boy that looks 16, um, that's just a it's a recipe for disaster. Yeah, no. yeah. I didn't last that long there. Um, and my mom saw the the problem that it was about that was starting to create. Yeah. It was starting to happen. And my mom got me out of there. And she was like, I was getting suspended all the time. I was getting kicked out of schools, and I went to three different three different um, middle schools in LA. And it got to a point. My mom didn't threaten me. She just did it. Mm. I got I, we moved into the new neighborhood, and I got into it with the niggas over there. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Um, being from where I'm from, not not as far I never joined the gang, right, but right, being right. from the neighborhood, it don't matter. Right. Really you don't. from that neighborhood? Where you from? Man, I ain't from yeah. nowhere, nigga. Where you live at, bro? Right. Mm-hmm. I live over there. Oh, this nigga from such and such. Yeah. Exactly. So that's, that's, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I just, I, I just yeah, know yeah, that I'm not from the hood. Nah, it don't matter. Yeah. That's, so, that's tragic. I'm, yeah. not, I'm laughing because the story's funny. Facts. <laughs> but but so, it's how that works. Yeah. So my mom was like, "Pack your bags. I'm sending you on a greyhound to your father." You live the real life Trey. Send me. And then, yeah. Real life Trey. Pops. And and, 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 and and people who watch this show who know me, like they know my and, and they, they knew my father. Furious Styles mm-hmm. is a thousand percent my pops. Furious yeah. Styles. Yeah. Furious sure. Styles. My dad would be on the block talking to all the ga- all the G niggas, talking like just mm-hmm. talking like you know, just talking like game to him. They just sitting there listening to him. They they both back and forth smoking. My pops smoked and everything. Mm-hmm. And like I uh, my neighborhood, every neighborhood we went to, my mom moved to, even though she divorced my pops years ago, every neighborhood he would come to, when he come to visit for the first time, he would just hit the block mm-hmm. and just introduce himself to niggas on the block. The niggas yep. huffing in the front yard, getting right. Yeah. So about doing? Can I hit that real quick? And mm-hmm. my dad under there hitting the set with, yeah. the, with, the, with yeah, the young yeah, G niggas, yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? And just telling you, this is my son, him right he was, there. He was protecting you. Yeah, yeah. he had a dad, he had a father. You. Yes. you know what I'm ah, saying? That's really so, good. That's really and so, good. And they respected him for it. And um, on top of that, I was always down to chunk them. So that yeah. you, in my neighborhood, in most neighborhoods, if the fighting is just to, to know if we're gonna be friends, you gotta know you gotta how to fight, fight. Mm-hmm. or you gotta be down to. Yeah, yeah. you don't gotta know. You gotta how. be down to fight. You gotta be down fight to fight him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. is that him? Especially how old are you? You nine? He nine yeah. too. Y'all yeah. go. Yeah, yep. you know what I'm saying. Y'all the nah. same size. Boom. Yeah. And so, and my nose was busted. The first twenty five minutes I got outside my my, my neighborhood when I was seven, we had first moved back, to, moved up to the, into the nineties, and those are the niggas out for the next. Five years, those was my road dogs. Those are the things mm-hmm. I rode bikes with. Yeah. Stole bikes with. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Back yeah. Of the tire. yeah. 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 Jump on my pegs, my nigga. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's Let's go find you a bike. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's what's it's so It's unfortunate, but that's how we was. Yeah. These boys in the hood. And I remember that. You know what I mean? That's how they, that's how the crew was. Like, that's one thing that, that I appreciated about this last watching is how solid Trey was. Yeah. Considering who his daddy was, yeah. right? Yeah, like they was like like everybody is so familiar. The way little Chris be like, "What up, Trey?" Yeah, mm-hmm. like this is a guy yeah. that he's known since he was little. Yes, and the way Trey give it back. Yeah, right. The way Trey walk up to the stoop like he does every day. That's what up, what monster? Yeah. What up, Trey? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like yeah. so there so there's they they live these different lives. Doughboy is different than Ricky, who was different yeah. than Trey. But they're family and they're, they're a family, unit, bro. right? Like, you know, and there's a respect and a love. Trey don't separate himself nah. from from those click. Right. Yeah. Even though he is fundamentally different. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Has a different life, mm-hmm. lifestyle, his home, upbringing, etc. His, home is, et cetera. his, his home, behind home is door different. Is different. It's very but different. they still people. And Trey never went anywhere in the hood where he didn't show love. Yeah, right. where he didn't get love back. Yeah. Right, right. Like Even in front of the grocery, in front of the, the grocery store, store. Yeah. big yeah. grocery yeah. store. I said, Ooh. Yeah. I said, oh, okay, yeah, yeah he knows. Trey, Trey is Trey is real solid. You know what I mean? Because yeah. Trey would have been them niggas had Furious not existed. Exactly. Yeah. Trey would have been Trey on the front the line. Trey was the shit since a kid. Yeah. yeah. Nigga, I'll kick your ass. Yeah. Yeah. Whack the nigga with the, the uh, nigga with say, the I ain't from Africa. Well, I'm from French Shaw Mafia. He's nigga, punk, I'll kick your ass. <laughs> yeah. He yeah. was that kid. He and and been, hit him with the stick. He would have yeah. been a monster, bro. <laughs> hit him with the stick. But here's a hot take that I got just from this last watch. I can't even believe I'm saying this. Uh-oh, but I'm going to say it. Like, there could be an argument that's made that Furious Styles low key ain't shit. 
Oh, whoa, whoa. Right? I gotta, yeah, whoa. yeah. Hold Let's on. get this. Yeah, yeah, this is how I take tone, by the yeah. way. Yeah, okay. Let's figure out what you mean. And by let that. me yeah. give you the evidence. First of all, they mentioned a couple of times how, like, Furious ain't really fucking with none of the neighbors. <laughs> right? <laughs> like, you know, like the, like the one lady called, how come you don't come over and play cards no, no more? more? Right? Yeah. Like, you know, uh-huh. yeah. so he low key ain't fucking with none of the neighbors. He basically cares about Trey, and that's it. Right? Like, you know, not necessarily. Well, let me, let me finish. Let, let me finish. Let me finish. Yeah. Because he makes the point where, you know, where he says, like, I'm trying to teach you discipline, right? Which is what your little friends across the street don't oh, have. Man. You're going to see what's going to happen to them. Like, I don't plan on intervening in their lives at all. When Ricky gets killed at the end, he says, I'm sorry about your friend. Like, he didn't watch this little boy grow up his whole life, too. So it's almost like Furious is like, like, he talks a good game, but he only really fucks with Trey and is not, like, even fucking with his own neighbors, right? Oh. He doesn't have a relationship with his neighbors. That was my take. Let me get... Go, go ahead. I'm going to let you finish out. I know you got some take. Yeah, go ahead. I disagree. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Respectfully. Fully or a or, no, no, or, or portion fully. of it? Okay. Not fully. I'm, I'm not I'm, completely I'm, wrong. No, but... I'm no, you know, you're, 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 it's 75%. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. But he used to go play cards. He used to. Said yes. it. Used he to. said, man, she would have had a chance if she didn't talk, talk so much. And right. you, you, you see and how we, she is. We, we see how she is. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. She's a she's a oh, she's a woman scoring for sure. Yeah, for sure. Like right. she's still, she, you ain't gonna be shit. You ain't gonna never be shit. Just mm-hmm. like your daddy. She's that mom. Yeah. But with the other boy, she's praising. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I literally go through, man. Mm-hmm. I got, I got, I'm the youngest, but I got older brothers. They, they three years apart, mm-hmm. and they got three different understandings of how they grew up, three mm-hmm. different perspectives of how they grew up. Mm-hmm. Three years yeah. apart. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. One was you just like your daddy. Other one was coddled. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I wasn't there. I was, I, I'm, I'm 11. Young. The youngest boy is 11 years older than me. Mm-hmm. My, so I wasn't there. So I'm, not, I'm not speaking from ex- experience. I'm. This is what I was told. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right, and right, how they were raised right. by the same mom mm-hmm. and right. the same dad. Right. They got the same father. Mm-hmm. Right. We all got the same dad. And one of my brother's perspectives is different from the other one. Yeah. 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 You know, one's like, bro, my mom talked talk to me crazy and treated me crazy, but crazy, but this one was the baby. And they got the same dad. It's not like, oh, and it came in uh in uh Ricky and Doughboy's character, um, uh, their lives, they their storylines, they had two different dads. Mm-hmm. The mm-hmm. same mom, two two different dads. Yeah. So the mom treated Doughboy mm-hmm. like like crap because the probably the relationship it, with the yeah, father it was yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. You remind me so much of your father. Yeah, I'm gonna treat you the way I how I feel about him. Right, right, now, right. What, 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 uh, and you can tell these they're probably a year apart. Yeah, yeah. Ricky and Doughboy the yeah. same yeah, age. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But she treats Ricky like the golden child. Mm-hmm. He's the one that's a football star. He's right. the one that mm-hmm. you know. Um, she always believed in him. Always believed in him. Yeah, but the whole time she's telling Doughboy, "You ain't gonna never be nothing. You ain't that's yeah. shit crazy, yeah. bro." Yeah. But listen, I. By my father, I used to get told that shit all the time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You ain't going to be shit. You're going to be a bum. You're going to be a loser. Actor. You ain't going to be no actor. It, it was never, where we grew up, it was never promoted that you were going to be anything. Which brings mm-hmm. me to, to Furious, why I say, why I respectfully don't agree. Mm-hmm. Because he did ask Trey, why, why uh, when, when, uh, when his girl said, my mom said he cute, he said, well, ask her why she don't speak to me yeah. when I say hello. You know what I'm saying? Then on top of that, you got to think it. about it. When he went to the hood, when he took, uh, when Trey and him came down to Compton, he was talking to everybody. Everybody, too, bro. Yeah. Yeah. But, it's, but, but okay, I valid point. I knew y'all was going to say that, right? <laughs> I'm about to, before you say that, let mm-hmm. me say one more thing. Yeah, I knew you was going to say that. When, when, uh, when Reva first dropped off her son, mm-hmm. Trey, to his dad for the first time to stay. Mm-hmm. And and he and he gets in the car. Before he gets in the car, she's talking to her son. Like, you know, now you're here with your daddy now. Everything will be okay. Mm-hmm. You gonna have to listen to him and this and the other. You can hear Furious talking to Doughboy. Yeah. What's up, man? Are you saying another trouble? Yeah. He's talking yeah. to Doughboy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Doughboy ain't hey, off from some bread to yeah. come yeah. up. Yeah. yeah. So don't, don't do that. Yeah. Said, <laughs> no, said that money ain't <laughs> shit. Yeah. All right. So here's I mean, so, so, hold on. So he was like, and he, he started hanging out. He was going over there and play spades all the time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He realized, oh, they, these motherfuckers ain't about shit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Let me separate myself exactly. from the bullshit. And my son. Yeah. And you know protect my and so And so that's the, that was the, the, the point that was interesting is because, like, Doughboy and Ricky grew up right across the street from this great man mm-hmm. who's raised this amazing son. And it just does not feel like Furious's hand 
and influence got across the street. You'll notice even when like Ricky and Doe talk about Furious, there's almost like a mystery, right? Like Ricky goes like, man, your daddy deep. He used to be a preacher or something. Right? Like, you know, like, why doesn't Ricky have a better relationship? Why doesn't Ricky have a better relationship with Furious? Doughboy says, your your father like Malcolm Farrakhan. You know what I mean? So, So to me, it almost felt like, like, the edge of uh, Furious's property is where his concern ended. Right, like you know, there was not a deep concern for Ricky and and Doughboy growing up. He cared about his son, even when he says in there, "Listen, I'm sorry about your friend, he, but that's they problem. But, but, right. but you that, my problem. But see, now, now, now that and that is the truth mm-hmm. in a sense. But you also got to understand, Fierce can only do so much. Right. That's not his kids. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? He tried, he tried to give that advice. He was always there. He made himself available. Mm-hmm. But again. That it his his response, and then he got he got Trey Mom breathing down his neck. So he got to make yeah. sure he, yeah. you know what I'm saying. And if he wasn't shit in the restaurant, in that in that scene, mm-hmm. I respected him for that. When she said, "Sit down," I'm gonna I'm gonna raise my voice and make a fool of both of us. Mm-hmm. He said, "All right." Even as an alfa male, yeah, he sat down yeah. and said, "All right, yeah. I hear you out." You know what I'm saying? Real shit. That's, That's a real man. Because he could have been like, this, you know what I'm saying? I'm out of so, here. Yeah. yeah, I'm out of here. You know what I'm saying? But he sat down. He heard her out. You know what I'm saying? They had that moment. So I feel like for many different reasons, even when he was like. When uh Trey when Trey was younger, he was like, uh, oh, I can't stay that long because uh me and like, my dad going, going fishing. fishing. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And then he talked to him about life. He mm-hmm. talked to him about everything. Yeah. That his main concern from day one was to make sure his son make had sure what he Trey needed. was okay. But at the same time, the people around him too. That's yeah. why Ricky and uh Trey became best friends because Doe was in and out of jail. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They even he, said he, it. he could only yeah. do used to so be friend, best yeah. friend with Doe Boy, but yeah. Doe Boy kept going to jail. Kept, kept going, going to jail. It's just very interesting how like one block. Right, like not even a block, no, one like street. just across yeah. the street. Across yeah. the, but what's up? But that's the morning after Doughboy walked across the street yeah. with with the, with the forty ounce. You know what I'm saying? With the house yeah. was on. But that's what makes this movie so real is because it was like that, right? Like the same right. kids playing right. around in the house. Like you caught it. Like you used to be up in everybody's house, yeah. but not yeah. everybody's house had peace, yeah. right? Yeah. So it's right. the story of these kids who literally grow up. You know what I mean? Like less than fifty feet away from each other that have. Totally different perspectives Facts. on life, and the, and the influence of the parents and the people around them is what that dictate was. I feel very like very interesting, very true, and I feel like Furious knew at the end of the day, of course, these kids is who they are because of who they have at the house. Exactly, yeah, no matter how much I speak to him, it might not work. But Ricky's not a bad kid. No, he's not. Right? He's not. Ricky's not a like like you know maybe there there's something there. It's just it's. It's clear as a father watching this movie, mm-hmm. right? I just the fact that that Furious was so close because Doe's that Doe's not a bad guy, right? He, like he's he, smart. Most of his Doe, shit was, Doe, Doe was saying some real. Shit. Doe's smart. He was telling niggas to be quiet when they, when the dude yeah. came. You tell him not to harass. Shit, respect. Yeah, you know he, I mean, he, like, he you know, I can't shit, read. Yeah. I'm not a fucking criminal. Yeah, right. And it was just like, damn, like. Like they were had so close. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So instead of they saying, so close. So let's change the narrative. Yeah, it's yeah. not that Furious Styles wasn't shit because he was. He was. Obviously. That was I think but yeah. I, I, you're saying. I had, warm the take up a little it, bit. Had, but you get my point. How do you say, yo, 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 Darren, come over come over tomorrow. I want to talk to you for a minute. Yes. Oh, oh where, where, where Trey at? Trey not here. Yeah. Did yeah, that, yeah, did that at, ever Trey happen? Trey at the Fox Hill Mall. Right. I want to go in the backyard with you real quick, man. And um, jump on these weights, man. This is, what, what you what you, what you plan on doing? Yeah. Because even Doughboy said, Trying to stay out the pen this time. Yeah, like he to yeah. himself. Yeah. yeah, I didn't want to go back. He and didn't, Furious yeah. didn't go to the party, but he ate the barbecue. Right? You know what I mean? <laughs> like, you know those. But that's normal, though. I get it. I get it. I just, I, I just is, felt like this time around. And again, every time I watch, it, it's disrespectful yeah. not to yeah. eat the eat the barbecue. And, and at the same time, mm-hmm. my see, my pops was the my pops would come pick me up from all my friends' houses, right? Mm-hmm. And they moms would always be like. Mm-hmm. Hey, Mr. Such and Such. Yeah. 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 Hey, Mr. Pickett and all that. You know, so Ola was his name. Hey, Ola. And so all my friends' and mothers had a little thing for my dad. Mm-hmm. Was your dad big? He was tall. He was slender, but he was like cut up. You mm-hmm. know what I'm okay. But he was like, yeah, he wasn't yeah. wide like me. Right, he was right, tall right. And, and cut up. My dad had like six pack when he was like 57. Yeah. You know what I'm yeah. 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 He was he didn't he didn't start losing his muscle until he, he stopped working out like around damn near 60. Because uh when I'm 10, my dad had me at 44. Damn. I'm the youngest, you know what I'm saying? So when I was 10 years old, my dad 54. And I'm 20, my dad 64. Yeah. Damn. You know what I'm saying? So my dad was doing push- I was doing push-ups in the middle of the night. I mean, in between co- commercials watching Martin mm-hmm. with my pops and, and sit-ups and shit. You know what I'm saying? So the memories. Yeah, man. So 
that type of shit mold me to who I am today. Mm -hmm. You know, and same thing with Trey. And even a uh, 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 more uh, Ricky wasn't a, um, a bad dude at all, mm -hmm. but he had no real integ integrity yeah. when it came to like she was like um uh. Maybe she was like that's how you, that's how you got the last one, mm -hmm. or you uh, going to um yeah. I won't say he had integrity. He did have integrity. He wasn't mm -hmm. just a fuck up. No, but, but, but even like, when even, she asked him to go to the store, the way he he's like, oh, I'll go in a minute. Yeah, and I'm yeah. like, he's still a kid. Yeah, he's still a kid. You know what I'm yeah. saying, but and on top of that, when he was like, "What you afraid of?" He was afraid to get the panties. Mm -hmm. You a virgin still? Ah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's yeah. Like, what you afraid of, man? He, he was like, of "Being a dad." He said. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. It, it never, it yeah. never. He never considered that because yeah. he never had that conversation yeah. with a father before, and that, and which so, shows he didn't pick up all furious either. That's you right. know, and so you and that's and that that's was my whole he, point. That, my whole point is like, like furious was right there. But look, you can only be in control. Like like they, the old saying say, you can lead a horse to water. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? They had access to that their whole mm -hmm. lives. He asked them, hey, let me give y'all some, you know what I'm saying? To, that was, that to, was and, the and first they said thing. no. Yeah. And yeah, then he cool. said, well, I have my son do it. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And then what they say, your daddy mean. Yeah. Damn, your daddy mean. Your daddy mean, bro. That was the boogeyman himself. My pops like, your daddy mean. Your dad like Farrakhan. I'm like, your dad like Malcolm X, cuz. Yeah. This nigga daddy, hey, bro, don't don't get don't hand this nigga the weed. His daddy can whoop his ass. Right, right. Here's my Here's my last point on it. Because, you know, we got a, a bazillion other scenes. I just, we saw Furious go to Compton and talk to the community. Mm -hmm. I just wish we could have seen him talk to the On kids next door. <laughs> his block. block. That's 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 the only point that I'm making. I feel you. I feel is you. that there was, like, there was something missing. But we know missing. he didn't, though? Because he's yeah, always because been thing, We mm -hmm. know he did. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Because that's to. his person. That, we saw him. Are you sitting out of trouble? That's the first thing he said. Yeah. I, I, honestly... I honestly think this. When Trey came, he came on the weekends. Throughout the week, throughout those five days. You think he was schooling them? Yeah. He was trying and now, to. now his son came. Now he like, yeah. not like him. get out the way, but he's yeah. he's distracted. Not even that. Now he got Where was the kids there. at when Trey pulled up? Before Trey even got out the car? They was and in they, front they of was, Furious was house. His, that's a Boom. valid point. What do you think he was point. talking to him about? Yeah. That's a great point. That's a great point. He tried to give him he tried that's to, a great point. He yeah. tried to give him a job that's and a build great point. responsibility. Yeah. He yeah. said, no, Trey, I think I know. They wasn't across the street at their yeah. house in their mama right. yard. They was at Furious House. And it could be argued that, like, because when he says, like, you're gonna see what's gonna happen to them, right? The the only part about that line that, that, that rubs me wrong way is like is that like you're gonna see what's gonna happen to them and we're just gonna watch. If right, they like don't you know, listen though. Yeah, but that's that's the un, that's the un, untold part. Yeah, it's just that that's the interesting part. Furious is such a incredible, dynamic, yeah. powerful character yeah. that I was like, damn, how come none of that got across the street? Because that's the truth what, is, hey, it don't always happen like this that. This is true. There's a scene. This is true. Whoa, whoa, whoa. There's a scene that we that's not in and not in every not in every version of Boys in the Hood. Mm -hmm. There's a scene where Cube comes to the door after Ricky gets killed. Mm. And he's trying to go talk to uh Trey. And he's trying to go past Furious. I just want to talk to him, man. He's not be you can't talk to him right now, man. He in the room. I put I, I sent I sent him to the room. Yo, Trey. And he tries to go past Furious. I forgot I seen this. I don't know. I'm gonna have to find this, it. You're just you ringing a bell for me. And then they kind of have a tussle match on the porch with Furious and Doughboy. He says, man, you're not going to go in there and get him. Go home, Joe boy. Go home, Darren. Mm -hmm. and, he, and he's like, mm -hmm. he's trying to get past Furious to get to his I boy. I think you're right. I, said, I think I, you're right. And the most, the, the most recent version I watched didn't have that in it. But I've seen that version. Yeah. I've seen that scene. Mm. It was an important scene. It was yeah. almost like. And no disrespect, I mean, you put in a hard spot because I'm sure he cares about Doughboy too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it was almost like, no, you're not about to send my son. You're not, you're yeah. not about to take yeah, my son nah. from you. Yeah. yeah. You're going to go do something yeah. fucked up. Yeah. 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 I'm yeah. Not about to have That's my a son. great point. I got to find that scene. Yeah. I, so, I might have to like buy because I just rented it this time around. Yeah. I might have to buy it to get the DVD extras. The DVD, yeah, yeah, because that might be in the hidden scene. And I think they might have took that scene out, but yeah. that scene was in there. Yeah. yeah. Where and you can tell Doughboy, he wasn't angry at Furious. No, he was right. he was hurting. Yeah. yeah, and he needed to. Say, you could tell he wanted just to, he just lost his brother and yeah, the other right. brother he can't get to. So he right. was yeah. like, yeah. And yeah. and Doughboy and, Doughboy, and, and Furious is like, yeah. I'm sorry, man. Go home. You can't yeah. see him. Damn. I'm protecting my baby. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because you got to think about it. He did let his girlfriend in. 
to right. the room. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? That's right. a different kind of energy. Yeah. So like, right. Yeah. That's the kind of energy he need right now. He didn't mm-hmm. need that rage. He didn't need. That, he didn't need Doughboy's that misguidance. energy. Yeah. He didn't need yeah. that yeah. devil in his ear. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so Doughboy got in the whip and came around the back. Mm-hmm. Ah. That's what you Yeah. Have to the back. That makes sense. And then, and then, and then that's when, the, and that's when Lawrence Fisher started started crying. Yeah. Now it makes like, sense because I was like, ah, uh, okay. Okay, mm-hmm. yeah, because that because it is a little con- like yeah, that like, that whole little part like, yeah. is a little choppy. Yeah, can we talk about uh, uh, Doughboy's Boy's love for his brother? That's yeah. crazy. Yeah. Doughboy Boy loves Ricky. Crazy, yeah, he bro. loved him. Bro. He really loved him, bro. He protected him since yeah. they was kids. And Do- why he loved his brother and never received the love that he needed from yeah. anybody. Yeah. That was so you good. Like Doughboy's Doughboy's Boy's self awareness and like the speech at the end. He goes like, you know, I ain't got no brother, I ain't got no mother neither. Man, she loved that fool more than she loved me. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you know, he was aware. Yeah. The homies he were always aware. He protected his brother, bro. But he, he always did. protected Stop his down, brother. Always. Bro. He got out, pulled I, the burner out, and got his look. ass whooped. But look, even Ricky was, he, I saw this scene where, where Ricky walked out and fucked with Doe. And that's mm-hmm. how they start fighting. Mm-hmm. His girl asked him to go to the store. Yes. He said, I'll go later. Then finally jumped up after seeing the long machine came out. Like, hey man, yeah. go go to the store and get. You know, she said, yeah. man, she told you to do it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's your they, wife. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You, know you got saying? a family. Yeah. Like Doe was like, don't Aaron boy me. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like yeah. you know, like that. Like that was Doe. That was Doe's beef. He wasn't even there to like start no shit. With with Ricky, but Ricky kind of like played him low. Yeah, yeah. Once, once, that's how Ricky was. Ricky, yeah. Even like with he was teasing Trey. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, why you ain't? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, because you scared. You know what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. don't get me wrong. Ricky wasn't no angel. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Nah, but yeah. he, of course, he didn't deserve to die like that. Yeah. But for the dynamics of the relationship between them two, mm-hmm. he was that really messed Doe up when, when when Ricky got shot. I know, bro. I got a cousin. Rest in peace, man. My cousin AJ, bro. And like I said, this movie. It, 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 you said it was a. Before I get to that part about my cousin, you said some earlier about you went to the, watch this as a family. Mm-hmm. That's crazy. My mom yeah. would. My mom yeah. would have let me. My my father would have taken me though, mm-hmm. but uh, my mom would didn't take me. But she should have. Yeah. Because yeah. it's a film that a grown man can relate to, a grown woman can relate to, mm-hmm. and a young ten year old boy can yep. relate to. And they had and the, the little girl. You see the little girl that was in there too. Yeah. Where she was. Yeah. That's something that mm-hmm. it, it, ain't, it ain't gender by a girl, a, a, a young fifteen year old girl with like yeah. Brandy. Yeah. yeah. Or a senior, she was a, she was a senior, but like she was like seventeen, eighteen. Mm-hmm. But like, there's everybody that can relate to this film. Mm-hmm. And so, a street nigga, a game banger. So. It, I, I, I watch this movie and it, it brings up so many memories and so many experiences in my life. Excuse me, I'm mm-hmm. burping this shit. My bad. Uh, now my cousin AJ, he's a couple years younger than me. He's like my little brother. I'm the youngest. I don't have no younger siblings, mm-hmm. but he was that. And my younger cousins, my cousin Byron, Brandon, Taryn, um, Sherry, and all that. These are all my cousins from my older cousins, her kids. Mm-hmm. Right. I said my first cousin. My second cousins are my age because I told you I'm the youngest. So my right, dad, right, my right, dad right. was 44. Right. My first cousin is, is 60 right now. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Shout out to my, my cousin Marsha. That's my nigga. It's a um, Southern she, family, right? Yeah, there. <laughs> yeah. So her daughter is her daughter is my big cousin. She's nine months older than me. Okay, okay. So AJ is three years or younger than me. So he was always the nigga I used to either beat up niggas for or get beat up for, right. get mm-hmm. jumped right. on for. Um, but he was a he was a hurt kid, man. He was a um, a light skinned kid full of dark skinned siblings, and they teased him for being light skinned. Yeah. So every time he came outside, he wanted to prove that he was no hope. Mm-hmm. And so even though my cousin's light skinned, his mom he looks just like his mom. Yeah. Right, right. But he don't but he don't look like his dad. Right, right, he right, like right. His mom was a light skinned woman. Right. So he always felt like he just wanted to be a, a mm-hmm. tough nigga and shit. to prove like, himself. Yeah, yeah. So, um. And so he used to pick on his little brother, Byron, who was mm-hmm. a cool, calm dude. His mm-hmm. dad used to always come around and stuff like that, big Byron. Mm-hmm. And he used to tease him and punk his little brother. He said, oh, his little brother got big enough to where he couldn't do it no more. Mm-hmm. His little brother is bigger than him. So, But he always he punked his little brother, and he always was protective of his, his little, little brother. brothers. Yeah, you yeah, know yeah. what I'm saying? And I look at Doughboy as a dude that his mom would told him to his face that I basically don't love you. Yeah. Yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And so, and I'm showing Cam Cam blamed him for his brother's mm-hmm. death. Mm-hmm. And that mm-hmm. wasn't That's his tough. fault. Yeah. It wasn't his fault, fault bro. It she wasn't, wasn't yeah. She didn't know what happened that night. Why you hit me? Shot. Why you hit me? Now, mind you, he's mm-hmm. the, he got physical by pushing him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But that's more like, like you say, don't Aaron boy me for I'm yeah. your big brother. Yeah, yeah. And I've been protecting you your whole life. Yeah. Your whole show life. Show me some respect. Come show on, me some bro. respect. Come and ask me in front of the homies. We got the homies well, out here. That's what you did. was like, can you drive me to the store around the corner? Yeah. Yeah. But even though back in the day, we was walking everywhere. Right. 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 But like he was like, bro, and on top of that, they I think because it's in the hood, you can get into scuffles. I get into scuffles 
all the time. Yeah, mm-hmm. that was normal. I didn't got to three or four scuffles in yeah. a day yeah. with yeah. three or four different type of niggas. Yeah. And forget about it the next day. And nah, these niggas out here looking for y'all, bro. Yeah. And I don't think they was realizing that. I, I would think... have never let my little brother go to the store and you by know how, And you know how it was normal? Mm-hmm. And, I, and it was very small, and a lot of people might have missed that, especially if you didn't grow up in the hood. When, after all that happened, after the fight, and after the mom slapped him in the face, soon as the mom went in the house, little Chris was like, hey, hey, no, why she, why she hit you? Mm-hmm. Instantly come with the jokes, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Because it's normal. He's like, no, shut up. And it went yeah. right back to normal. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Then yeah. instantly when a car rolled by, he like, oh, my brother. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's 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 automatic. Oh, like, shit, it, Rick. It, it, yeah. Right? Like, you know. Oh, shit, Rick, nigga. When that happened, you know, I, oh, man, it hit me right here. Nigga, bro, like, you know how. But, but see, it's because Doughboy, and 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 they, they point this out at a couple of times in, in the movie on like lighter notes. Doughboy don't miss a fucking thing. He don't miss. He don't, God, he don't, he don't miss, miss a thing. He on that porch the whole time. He on that porch the whole time. Yeah. He don't miss a fucking it's like thing. It's like the night watch. Bro. Yeah. yeah. You know, we saw Trey came, coming up out the house at 2 a.m. Uh-huh. So yeah, yeah. What are you doing? Yeah. 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 I was like, damn. Yeah. Yeah. Doughboy don't miss a thing. Right. So when Doughboy <laughs> saw the yeah, when Doughboy saw the red car come around the second time, he, he immediately knew us up. Right. But every opportunity that that Doe had to love his brother, he did. Mm-hmm. When yeah. his ball got took, you know what I mean? Yeah. Doughboy already knew. Don't yeah. take that Stupid, ball man. with you. They yeah. gonna take it. Yeah. And he said, if somebody take it, I ain't gonna do nothing. And, he and then he immediately yeah. did the sister, thing, bro. Yeah. right? You know, That's my sister, <laughs> always there, always there, always. Um, even at the end, like that shit was personal. Yeah, like dope That's got out the stood car. There so yeah, like, dope man, what you doing? We gotta go, yo, yeah. dope. What's, no. what's up? He blacked he, out for a minute. No. That's why he was like walked out. Bam! Turn your punk ass over. Yeah, right. Like you know, had to hit him with it. And then what did dope boy do the next day? He was looking for something on the news about his Damn. brother. Right? <laughs> like he was looking, he I was fucking around to get me emotional. Yeah, yeah, you know what I mean? Like he woke up, I, I ain't been up he this early in a while. My... I was watching all this shit about violence and we live in a foreign world. And shit. Foreign shit, and they didn't have shit on my brother. Right? Like, you know, like even afterwards, a lot of he these... still was looking out for little bro. When it comes to these boys in the hood, yeah, a it, lot bro. of these niggas don't be getting seen. Yeah. So yeah. I promise you, bro. Imagine I, I've seen them. I've seen the kid. If I didn't get seen by my parents, especially my pops, I would have been the nigga. The niggas I grew up with would be on the block, just on the corner, just sitting yeah. up there. They just yeah. got put on the hood. Yeah. Now they just on the corner, want everybody to, to see. Yeah. I'm on the hood now. I'm from such and such, and they out there. They mm-hmm. chest out. Boom. They want to be seen. Mm-hmm. Nigga. They just want to be seen, bro. And the, and and I'm I'm definitely not advocating for all the gun violence and all the street gangbang and shit. But a lot of times these niggas is crying out for help, yeah. and, and, and these mm-hmm. dudes are, are young men that don't have they don't have no value. They they don't see this, themselves as, the value as valuable. Themselves, yeah. So mm-hmm. they say, well, shit. One thing I know I'm good at is protecting this neighborhood, nigga. Where you mm-hmm. from, nigga? You know where you at? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? A good nigga, point. You see a nigga playing at the park, That's hanging out, point. having a good time. Nah, nigga, you mm-hmm. ain't having a good time in my in my park. Right, right. Nigga, right. I, I know I can protect. I can patrol this neighborhood, yeah. this district, the session, the section, and I'm good at that. Damn. I'm gonna be the best game maker in, in the world, and they gonna know me for that, if nothing else. Nigga, I'm gonna die. I ain't, mm-hmm. gonna, I ain't gonna make it to 21 anyhow, nigga. But when I die, that's nigga, what Do, that's what Doe said too. And yeah. then died two weeks later. Yeah, nigga. So even even on that, so when, when Jazz when she was like, mm, she read that part, she was like, mm. Cause it's it's, it's, a, it's a cycle, bro. bro. It's, a cycle. it's a cycle. He said he said it. He, he called said it out. Was, he called he it called out. Called it out. And I'm thinking to myself, I've never had that mentality. I never, I was afraid to die. I didn't want, mm-hmm. and my afraid to die was, I wasn't afraid to get beat up. I was afraid to lose my life and mm-hmm. not be able to live and experience life. Because you had love no at home. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I had you love had at home, yeah. and I thought, I used to dream about doing shit when I was young. Mm-hmm. I used to have, I used to daydream and even have dreams about me being a grown man. And yeah. look about, and I used to always wonder, am I gonna grow into my head? I, don't yeah. think, I think I did. <laughs> mm-hmm. I think I did a little bit, you know what I'm saying? But yeah. I was a big head and a little kid. So yeah. I used to picture myself as a as a um a 20-year-old young man. Mm-hmm. And I used to ask my sister to draw me grown. My sister used to draw. Damn. I used to draw a picture of me as a grown man. That's <laughs> a hell of a lot. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. I, so I, I always saw myself as being like my dad. Being I, I saw mm-hmm. my dad, his his brothers, my uncles. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? The men in my life, my older brothers. I saw so, so many older men 
that were doing good. My brother had a Jetta, nigga, back mm-hmm. when Jettas was cracking. Damn. You know what I'm saying? He mm-hmm. had beaten the back. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So my homeboy's dad, uh, Mr. Haywood, had big beat. He had a a, a, vo- a, a Volkswagen bug with heavy beating that mm-hmm. bitch. Yeah, he, a lot of niggas so don't know about them bugs, and bugs used to be cracking. Cracking, yeah, buddy. Man, it was everywhere. This is 90s. Yeah. This is yeah. 90s. This the shit that uh, they was, what, what, what Trey had? They was loud. Yeah, Trey had was they was loud. They was stick was shift. Cracking, bro. Yeah. Straight. Yeah. In the trunk was in the front? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Come on. And you notice he had the same thing his dad had. Yes. Just change the paint job. Just change the paint job. Yeah. So I'm saying like That's dope. I saw my I wanted to be grown one day. Mm-hmm. So I, but some dude, I promise you, some niggas like, bro, I, nigga, I got three brothers, they both in the ground. All three of them in the ground. Yeah. Nigga, I'm just trying to live as much as I can. He said both my brothers, uh two of my brothers died at 19, mm-hmm. a year apart. And the other brother died on at 22. He barely made it. I'm sorry, he did he, he was like, he didn't he didn't make it to 21. Yeah. So he was like 20. So a lot of these dudes feel like, well shit. They're not afraid to go. I think they got they got numb yeah. to it so early. They got nothing to look forward to. Yeah. Like like if you right. think about it, like Joe gets love from Dookie, from Monster, right? Like you know from Lil Chris. Like those are the only people that that show love. Yeah, mm-hmm. those got nowhere yeah. to be. Yeah. He's got nothing to yeah. do. No plans. Yeah. No plans. Trey has a job. Ricky has all. Ricky has has yeah. football practice. He has a scholarship to get to. A football practice. Joe don't have nothing. He yeah. but but he's got a tremendous sense of loyalty. He's got a code, right? Like you know, mm. that's why Cube's portrayal of him is so interesting. Is because Doughboy is every much as bit as Furious Styles. Right. He's got hey. information, but he's got limited information. Yeah. You know who he took? I, I got I got to take later mm-hmm. on mm-hmm. before the end of this podcast. Yeah, of what Doughboy would have been had he not got yeah. killed. Yeah, but we'll go ahead. He's he's got limited information. He's got opinions. He's got perspectives. He has a sense of decorum, right? He understands the moment. Doughboy understands what's happening for Ricky. When when the when the recruiter shows up, that's my brother. He live here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Move. Yeah. yeah, the man's here about business. Yeah, yeah. stop yeah. talking about yeah. you want a scholarship. Yeah, get you get off. Sit on the plastic. You sitting on the good part. Yeah, right. Like you yeah. know, he's I'll not trying to fuck it up for his hey, man, brother. Man, stop yeah. so motherfucking loud. Man. Yeah, my mom don't like that shit. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> nigga. Yeah, even 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 Darren. as a, yeah, she's not gonna hear this shit. Right. Even right. as a little boy, he understood things. Don't even, take you know, that ball out. Yeah, yeah. Cause your dad shot at somebody last night, <laughs> right? Yeah, like yeah, you know, yeah. like that like, nigga is always <laughs> neighborhood watching. This yeah, motherfucker no knows boy. what's up. And no boy is a boy in the hood. He's not a menace to society. Right. And this you know what is saying? a good right. point. Facts. You right. know what I'm saying? Right. Now here's the thing. I know he sold drugs, mm-hmm. and I'm not justifying that. I know this guy. I'm not gonna say his name, but a, a dude not grew up in uh, the guy that grew up in my neighborhood is older than me. And he worked at Foot Locker. Mm-hmm. He had a regular job, and he he graduated from, graduated from high school. He, all his brothers was bloods. He did game bang. And he, he had two older brothers at game bang, and three younger brothers at game bang. And he didn't game bang. And everybody in the hood respected him. One day, my mom might see this one day. I came home to my house, and he's in my house cooking crack. I said, "Whoa!" Mm-hmm. The only and how, reason- and how, how close was y'all? Uh, as friend, his little brother was my partner, mm-hmm. Damn. and he was like, uh, he said he was like three years older than me. Ah, okay. But he was a, he was the kind of person that would help my mom bring groceries into the house. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying, and he was solid. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying, and uh, I liked him, I respected him, I looked up to him. Yeah, and he was cooking crack in my house one day, bro, on my stove. Mm-hmm. What a and situation he, to be in, bro. And he was like, man, but he was like, bro. Uh, uh, he said, uh, hey, I'm, I'm his little homie. You don't got to explain shit to me. Right, right, right. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? My cousin let him in the house. Right. And, and so I was so, but I, I respected him. He was, I know he wasn't a no good nigga. Mm-hmm. Right, right. But he was cooking crack because he was like, bro, I need to, I need to get my mom up out of here, bro. I yeah. got seven, it's, it's his, his mom got eight kids, seven siblings. He was like, and I'm the second oldest. He was like, bro, I can't cook this in my mom's house because I got fiends that live with me. Damn. And I'm like, Oh shit! Okay, he said, "I'm gonna be done in a minute, though." I was like, "All right, cool." He said, "I'll make sure that nigga, the windows was open and all that shit." He was like, "He had the mask on." I was like, "Bro, he was like go outside though. Like, mm-hmm. Don't don't stay here." Um, just like that. Yeah, but so just it, like that. And but this Straight dude, up. but he went to church. Yeah, he went to church. He took his grandmother to church, and he was just a good dude. Mm-hmm. Everybody I don't fuck with blood, bro. He he's solid. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying, and he was a big nigga. He wasn't no little dude. 
Um, but he was just, a, and, but he was cooking crack. He was selling crack he too. He was a boy in the and hood. And this is something that he, and, and he knew I looked up to him mm-hmm. and he, he came and told me, he was like, bro, I don't normally do that, bro, but I got to make some money. And so in my mind, and some people say, oh, you just been using that as an excuse. Mm-hmm. Now nah, he got, I got a regular yeah. job. Yeah. yeah. I got a regular job, bro. I need, I, more. I need, I need more. more faster. Yeah. For, for yeah. a purpose. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. And, 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 and I was 12 at the time. I can't tell him you're wrong. Right. I mean, he mm-hmm. is wrong, but. Right. We he he live in the he live really we, we live in the pueblos. Yeah. This is this we live in the hood, bro. Yeah. We in the projects, bro. He don't know nothing else, and if he do, he he, he feel like he don't have no other options. Option, yeah. So here's, here's a big difference, a big difference. What you said was so profound. How Cube, how Doughboy was a menace, was a boys in the hood, not a men's in society. O Dog would have shot Ferris on Crenshaw, <laughs> right? Like that, you know, it's you, cracking. Yeah, yeah. fuck if yeah. we got a problem here. Nah, nigga. Cube, yeah. Cube brandished. Yeah. He pulled it up. He shouldn't have, to, but yeah. I mean, he escalated it there, but O Dog would have shot him. O Dog would have shot him. O Dog would have shot him, right? You and know, everybody yeah. else getting shot too. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. now nigga had a nigga had a Uzi. Yeah. Yeah. He had an yeah. Uzi. Yeah. 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 You shoot him, if he get back to that trunk, it's over. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But now instead of doing that, he did. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He shooting yeah. 12, 13 people. Right. Yeah. So you're right. Uh, and Doughboy was responsive. He wasn't out there trying to, yeah. he wasn't mm-hmm. a jacker. Yep. He, oh, he, hold on, hold on, hold on. Now I take that back because it was a subtle when he said, uh, Doe was like, oh, uh, nigga always want to show how tough he is, uh, something, something, something. Mm-hmm. And then Lil Chris said, nigga, shut up. You be doing that, that shit, shit too. too. And yeah. I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was like, yeah. okay, yeah. okay. But well, hold on. Yeah. Maybe, maybe. Yeah, but, but, but. Not, like, not with the exes always. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like yeah. Doughboy's response felt measured. <laughs> like yeah, yeah, oddly, yeah, yeah. right? Like extra. oddly, you know what I mean? Like you know, it was disrespectful by, by, manners, by calling the sister a bitch. Right. You know what I mean? Like yeah. you know, sh- no, shut no, up, no, bitch. No, 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 no. That's another thing though yeah. about that. Mm-hmm. He never called uh, me alone character a bitch. Mm-hmm. No. Now she said, "Why are you always calling me something?" something? He said, "Why are you always calling me a hoe?" Something, something. He said, "Because that's what you are." Now yeah. in reality. Way before that, in the previous scene at the barbecue, he was calling her bitch in the hole. She's mm-hmm. still sitting in this nigga's passenger seat. Right. Not mm-hmm. every woman is a queen. Not some yeah. are bitches yeah. and, and hoes. Yeah. So when she asked him, he said, "Cause mm-hmm. that's what you are." And I was like, "Yeah." And so yeah, it shows you kind of true. It kind of true. true. Because, because she comes, first of all, a masterful performance. Oh yeah. By by, by oh, yeah. I'm, I'm scheming on this hoes, yeah. man. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> she said, yeah. "That's fun, yeah. hey, bro." Yeah. Uh, but she got and to laugh. She said, yeah. "She found that." <laughs> Yeah. Yo, yo, yo nigga. Yeah. I'm scheming on this hoes, man. You better watch him. Yeah. Yeah. Might, might get, get, might get but took. That's, yeah. why she, that's why he called her that. Yeah. That's what she was. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? A skeezer. It's yeah. skeezer. It's the 90s. Yeah. She a skeezer. Sipping on the, I'm scheming sipping on, on, the yeah, yeah. on the 40 with him. That's what I'm saying. She owned a porch with a with game bangers. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, oh uh and Brandy is going in and out the house. Yeah. Mm-hmm. She, with her with her school uniform on. Yeah. Sitting on her porch. Right. And he told her, like, why haven't I heard from me this and the other. She went mm-hmm. to the function yeah. for Doughboy to come home. Right. She knows Doughboy since she's known this nigga since she was six, exactly. seven years old. Yeah. Eight years old. So she like, okay, that's the but homie. But that wasn't her friends, though. Mm-hmm. You nah. know what I'm saying? Because if it was her friend, they would have known. You know what I'm saying? So that wasn't her friend. She was a different type of female. Doe didn't talk to her like that. Yeah. You know nah. what I'm Doe didn't talk to her like that. Doe wanted her to be, yeah, that's my lady. How's she gonna be a lady when she's my wife? Yeah. 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 How's she gonna wife when she's my lady? <laughs> yeah. Nigga. Yeah. Like that's us, yeah. yeah. All day Even, we see a chick. The, the chick in my apartment complex was was her name was Passion. Mm-hmm. Her that's name a great was name. Passion. Yeah. That's a great ghetto name. Uh-huh. That's I knew this cockeyed uh, girl named Passion. Uh, she was cute though. Yeah, I kind of she Passion. Nah, she wasn't. Okay, mm-hmm. that's what nah. I know Passion. And this is the second time I done brought her up, mm-hmm. man. She might. She might. Fuck with, I ain't seen her since we was about. Yeah, eleven, twelve. But you, but but you know what you remember? Yeah, but you and know her what you remember? Named, she had a little sister named Turquoise. Yeah, passion and turquoise. That pulled the fish tank on herself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Big ass fish tank, nigga. At her house, nigga. Mm-hmm. She she was trying to feed Damn. the fishes. Yeah. yeah. And, and so she tried to pull herself up and feed her fish in her, her fish tank. Mm-hmm. Her mom had a fish tank that was the size of this this yeah. table. Yeah. All the fish. Came all we heard, out, the rocks, all we heard all was that. we was outside playing in the courtyard. We hear boom. Crash. Yep. <laughs> and we just saw this water come That's out there. That's a lot of water. Yeah. Like, Damn, nigga, we went in and they ran up there. Her yeah. and her house was the candy house too. So, ah, oh, yeah. Candy so we went house. in, we looked in the door, nigga. She slid, knocked yep. out, wet. Nigga, yeah, water and fish flapping everywhere. Yeah, <laughs> nigga, we trying to pick the fish up and fish, put them in. Like fish uh, tanks was a thing in the eighties. Yeah, yeah, that was yeah. A, like if you had a, you, mm-hmm. you know, my daddy had a standard. tank. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Since we're talking about uh, lusting over chicks, uh, I'd, I'd have, I cannot mention 
I cannot let this podcast go oh, yeah, without go mentioning ahead, how ahead. fine Demita was. Come on. Yeah. Like, and it's something about the way she was taught. They, they used to be best friends with Doughboy. This a, uh, yeah, this, this, oh my yeah. God. This like, like lispy a little lispy, bit. lispy, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Uh-uh. Chocolate. He go to Crenshaw. Uh-uh. Right, like, uh-uh. you know, watch this <laughs> nah uh Yeah, he go to <laughs> Lustin. <laughs> yeah. Lustin. Yes, man. Lustin. Oh, man. God, oh, she was so minute. fine. Yes, she was. She was so fine. Uh, oh, so he go to watch that? No. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. He got a cat. That's hot. Oh, man. I would have risked it all. I would have risked man. it all. Yes, dog. What was that uh, old girl named that, that Trey lied about uh, getting something from? Oh, she was, oh, yeah. she was she, come yeah. as a kid. As, yeah. as a grown man. As a oh, kid, as that a story. That story as a kid, oh. bro. Do you know that? I like, fast forward to me getting in like to like high school, mm-hmm. and me, me, my my pop rest in peace. My pop's mm-hmm. gone, so he, yeah, he, he here and watch this stuff. Right. But uh, it was I me. Mean, I was like, I was a window hopping ass nigga, man. Yeah, you know, so on the side That's of the right. house, yeah. mm-hmm. uh, the window open, I was hopping that motherfucker. Yeah. yeah, I was. That was that dude, man. I've also and I was in college. I was in college at this time. I also hopped off a roof, went through a window. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Uh, got the condom still on, nigga. Yeah, oh. yeah, yeah. <laughs> nigga, you know what I'm yeah. saying? They don't got time to take it off. Yo, man, we got to get about Dodge, man. Yeah. Let me ask you a question. Do you think Furious believed Trey's story? Hell no. Nah. You I don't... think because of, no. Hell yeah, no. Because mm-hmm. the way he was telling it, it was too, he was like, he know his son ain't Yeah. Ain't I guess she can smell like... the sex in the air. Yeah. That's embellishing. Yeah. How would you know <laughs> that, bro? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, right. it, exactly. He was putting on the extras. Yeah, can you drive stick? <laughs> yeah, 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 like I that. Can if you teach me. Yeah, yeah that man. would never happen. Yeah. Like in Ooh, real life, on, man. I think Fury's doing is full of shit. Yes, still was a great story. Right, it was great amazing. Story. Yeah. Now it was um, a Sunday. Yeah, that's my my and my pops was a barber. Mm-hmm. And my yeah. pops was a barber, even though all through high school I had a long ass fro in here and braids and shit like that. So mm-hmm. I didn't my dad didn't cut my hair, but my whole life my dad cut my hair. So having those talks, why why why, why we why yeah. we uh mm-hmm. all those gyms, man. So bruh, you was really really training. I promise you, in my life, man. I asked uh, the homies that you you've met some of the homies, but you didn't get to talk to them. Right, right, like, right, right. Walking into my house, I remember in the morning, I'm getting ready for school. My sister in my room, like, mm-hmm. doing braid my hair or putting my shit in the ponytail or something like that. And then my homeboys is coming, knocking on the door because we, cause we about to school. walk to school. Yeah, but yeah. I'm not shit. ready yet. Yeah. I'm not ready yet. So now I hear them in the living room talking to my dad. Damn. You know what I'm saying? Sitting down there. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, so, so what are you going to do to get your grades up there? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. What's more Furious. important? The ball or, mm-hmm. or, or, or your grades? What you going to do if the ball don't work? Mm-hmm. All that kind of, oh, my own, uh, you right, I'm going to go to school or I'm going to go to community college and stuff. So, yeah, but you're a junior. You can get your grades right mm-hmm. before you graduate. Right, you don't right. have to go to community college. You can right. just go straight. Yeah. You settling in You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. And my, my dad mm-hmm. on the head. So we get we, we walk to school. Damn, nigga, your, wow, your pops, man. Yeah. Like, damn, nigga. I said, I know, man. He was like, but I promise you, fast forward to now be 22, 23, 24. And they're like, yeah. bro, I miss your dad, bro. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, I went yeah. by your pop's house. I'm yeah. in college, nigga. I'm over here playing ball in, up in the bay. And the homie, I went by your dad's house. Uh, I'm like, nigga, what are you on my dad's house? <laughs> yeah. You used to think about the house. Right, right. But, nigga, I, maybe called on my dad. Your, your boy Ray stopped by. Your boy Jamal stopped by. Yeah. yeah. asked me a couple, Guys a couple questions that. about like that, about resumes Guys and shit like that. that. Yeah. But then they had no dads. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Well, Ray did. So now, shout out to my nigga Ray. Ray had a pops too, mm-hmm. uh, Mr. Ari- Ariano. But like, this my dad was a different perspective of man to hear from, and most niggas didn't have that. Yeah, right. And you know I think saying? I think as men mature, especially men that grow up without dads, it becomes clear what they're missing. Oh yeah. And if there is someone in close proximity to that they feel comfortable enough, yeah. that's where they go for information. Right. Right. Like right. you know when when men start to mature start to want to change their lives, Make start to want to improve, you look for a scout. You look for somebody that knows the, the right. terrain. Right. Because mm-hmm. most of the times your homies ain't already there. Right. That's right. what that's would be your first go to. Right. But like, you know, when you get to, to changing things or wanting to change <clears throat> things, you know, that's what may, might have been able to happen right. for these characters, you know, with the Furious. Yeah. At that that particular Facts. point. Um, it's interesting this movie. Every time I watch it, this movie becomes a different genre. Sometimes it's a drama, uh, sometimes it's a tragedy. Sometimes this movie is a comedy. Uh-huh. There's some very funny shit in this movie. Yeah, it is. As, as, as well. It's relatable. It's relatable. Yes. Like, homie, in the beginning, a little man. Catch. Catch. 
and he just like <laughs> throws the ball like 70 yeah, yards. Yeah. <laughs> Unless you David Bishop, <laughs> yeah. Michael Vick, like, right, you're not being right. like, it was he was all the way down the, he, the other other end of the damn alley. Didn't he you? threw that pass like eighty yards with a just a slight motion. Like that part cracks me up. Mm-hmm. The size of the holes in Trey's uh uh in, in Furious's door. But like, wait, 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 but that was a that was a three fifty three fifty magnum. And I'm like, that's going but I just remember like like peeping through you can see through, you can see through, it? through oh, yeah. it. God damn, God damn, up there was his door. Right? Like all of that shit was funny. Uh, um, Regina King's character was funny. Mm-hmm. Uh, oddly, the Trey breakdown, the 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 swing. Uh, man, you know I mean? was going we'll to say that. Yeah. <laughs> they, they didn't did that scene in so many comedy yeah, movies. Yeah. Even Snoop and Neil Long did, did that. it. Yeah, 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 bro. That part is oddly they funny. They did that in Don't Be a Menace. Yes. Mm-hmm. He was socking all the kids out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Real quick, I want to say this, and I, I, I love Furious Styles as a character mm-hmm. and everything he represents. But why the fuck was his bathroom so fucked up? Yeah. Hey. I said, nah, yeah, bro. Yeah, that was all. His house yeah, was how kind of dare, fucked up. How dare you? Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Because Doughboy house wasn't that dirty. Yeah, it wasn't. Mm-hmm. Mom's was, might have been trifling, yeah. but she yeah. kept a clean yeah. house. Yeah, there was dirty sink. There was dirty dishes the, in the sink. I yeah. said, they had to catch up on yeah. them. Yeah. Nah, that's one thing. Man. My pop wasn't like that. Yeah. But my, look, my I dad didn't get though, down with that at all. What I noticed, though, was when they grew up, his house was, it was, tight. was clean. Yeah. yeah. When mm-hmm. he got older. Because I did yeah. notice that. Because when he first moved in, when he, that's was, true. he was yeah. like, ugh. I'm like, damn, maybe it was his dad was going through some They was young. Some stuff. They was young. He was young. They was young. He was younger. And when I moved in with my pops, I was the. The maid, nigga. Yeah. yeah I, and that's I, when yeah. the maid Trey. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think probably when he was there by himself, he had no behavior to model for Trey. Yeah. So I think once Trey moved in, I got I to gotta tighten up. Go I got to tighten up. Way. You know what I mean? Let me go back to the basics. You yeah. know, mm-hmm. because my son is here. And like low key, like they had the house because like Chicks was hollering at Furious. Yeah. They wanted him. <laughs> yeah. Man. Chicks was pop, not yeah. 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 Chicks, Furious, like low key. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. Like they was both in the house. Like yeah. Furious was well dressed. You know what I mean? Had his mm-hmm. business, had his, had his, yeah. you know. Like even Brandy Moms was hey, like, Brandy, well, yo, what? Brandy Moms was fly too. Dude, Brandy Moms had was little fly. Guns on yeah. Them. Yeah, yeah, I'm not, I ain't gonna lie. I said, man. Uh-huh. See, I was the kid that saw the girl across yeah. the street. Like, damn, she pretty. Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Get your fast. I remember I, 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 doing Johnson. Mm-hmm. I remember I got in trouble because there was this lady in my building that used to. Whenever I went to the to the store, she worked at the store across the street from my crib, mm-hmm. and she would always let me get extra stuff for free. Mm-hmm. And she used to give me a little wink and stuff. And she was so thick, bro. I mean, and I, I said, know. maybe, maybe just maybe we can be something. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, mm-hmm. I'm like 13 years old. I write a little love letter, fold it up, give it to her. Like, You're hilarious, nigga. You read that. And if you was on the East Coast, she would have been fucking with you. She gave that shit to me. But we'll tell you about that. We'll we'll tell you what we mean. The statutory shit. Right, right, right. But yeah, she gave that shit to my dad. And my dad said, hey, homie. Oh, wow. You you wrote a letter to the uh, the neighbor, to, to, uh, to the neighbor wife, homie? I said, <laughs> told us you like he was the homie. Yeah, oh, hey, my nigga. Yeah, because he, he was like, what's, what's up with that, homie? You, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, well, I thought she liked me, Dad. You said, I mean, you're 13, homie. Yeah. <laughs> this said, is ridiculous. You right. He said, yeah, man, slow down, man. Slow down, son. Uh-huh. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? A couple years, maybe. She do got ass, though. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah that's, what do, that's what I was waiting on. That's what she That's what I was waiting on. Yeah, that, that there. That uh-huh. man, moms. That's hilarious, yeah. bro. Yeah. Um, shot is shot. Yeah. Shot sure. is, hey, I'm not mad at that. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Tell me what you feel about that. Yeah. yeah. Tell me what you think Just about this. Just pull me, the pull me note. Yeah. You remember those? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're talking about the pool. The one you fold like a square and you say, you say pull me? Oh, I know what you're talking oh, about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you. And, and it unravels. I know what you see it. You was yeah. talking about the the this right here. This oh, no, one. no, no, yeah. no, not yeah, not that's, that's yeah, just that's what I, I miss yeah. the hood origami. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, miss the, I miss the hood origami, mm-hmm. man. Pick a color. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. A blue? Yeah. yeah. L U. Niggas could work magic with some notebook paper. Damn. Right? Like, you know, some folds. You could tell somebody was meticulous about their shit. Like my shit mm-hmm. was always like it was the basic structure of what I was trying yeah, to make. It wasn't right, but bro. it wasn't. It was the quality wasn't yeah. good. Like, I was good at this shit, man. Yeah. I had sisters, that's so how we move. Yeah, how you do it again? Okay, like that. Mm-hmm. I had sisters. I had yeah. a gang of female cousins and shit too. Uh, what about when you get home and you got a note in your book, in your book bag, or in your folder, in your, in your page? Bro, that's the best. You be like, who was this from? Mm-hmm. Yeah. This is from such a, yeah, yeah, you read that over. Yeah. Come say her name and shit. Yeah. You know, they probably yeah. be watching me. Nigga, yeah. you uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. You like, oh, yeah. Phone number. 
That's yeah. that's the phone number calling the house phone. Nigga. Yeah. When he was on the house phone with her, yeah, and he was there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you see the legs? Though? Yeah, yeah, little tray. Yeah. You over get the rounds yeah, and shit. Yeah. Turn her the digits you, you, on you what? You think you cute? Hey, don't you taking your shirt off? Yeah. We were playing basketball, so mm-hmm. I was just, you know what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. You was watching me. I wasn't watching you. I don't, wait, yeah, wait, that watching conversation you. sounds legit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it sounds yeah. legit for me. Then my mom be on the phone. Jada done told you get off this phone. Tell your friend to your friend. You be your friend. Good night. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but see, but but what I realized is is that I do this shit to this day. Um, you know, whenever you call, because this was before girls had their own lines, right? Right. Uh, as respectful and kind as I could be to yes. their mother, yes, indeed. almost like gave me additional anytime minutes. Okay. Yes, for the conversation, yes. Okay. right? Like you know, doing that credit. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I like him. Yeah, right. yeah, I like What's him. What's his name? Jahadi. Yeah. Jahadi. Mm-hmm. Where, where is he from? Mm-hmm. He from yeah. Africa? Because yeah. because. Mm-hmm. Parents took it as disrespectful if you was like, "Can I speak to Shanae? Don't go straight. Like to if it. you just if nah, you went past, yeah, yeah, nah, you know what yeah. I mean? Like you know, hi, Miss Johnson. This is Tony. Yeah. How are you? Are you having a good day? <laughs> I, was, I was just wondering if it would be okay if I could talk to Shanae. But what? Yeah, I'm, I'm Tony. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm t- were you Tony? Or, were, were, Tony. I'm okay. Tony. Okay. Um, but yeah, that gave me like 15, 20 minutes extra. You know, and yeah. then it would because then it would be like, "Who are you on the phone with?" And they'd be like, "I'm on the phone with Tony." Okay. okay. Yeah. Okay. Get like, ah, got gotcha. you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Got gotcha. you. Gotcha. I like him. I yeah. want to meet him. Man. Yeah, you over there in the room. I was that nigga. Yeah. With the stage. <laughs> they see me, they be like, yeah. this yo, this vote yeah. banner, I'll be, I'll be. And that's who you. Trey was. Trey, Trey was who, who, like, like, even like, uh, like Ricky's mom was like, you know, go over there and talk to some of what you got. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you know, rub off yeah. on them. Trey, every, every girl at the party. Yeah. Was like, yeah. Who, yeah. like, who, like, who is that? Like, he walked in with the, everything was nice and mm-hmm. manicured. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He was, he, he was, he was dapper. He even though, cool. like, yeah. no one hated him. He yeah. said, You like this? He said, Man, you look like you selling rocks. You sound like you selling, yeah. like you selling that's, rocks. That's, <laughs> that's yeah. nigga, yeah. that's the way of saying. Yeah. You, you fly. You fly. Yeah. You fly. Yeah. That was a Whatever. compliment. You fly. Yeah. That's yeah. no way of saying. Yeah. Yeah. I see you shining. Shit. I see you. I see yeah, you shining. Shine yeah. My nigga. And and that. I mean, that's literally who Trey was. You know, in 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 the hood, everybody respected him, and that's what you know. I talked about it earlier in the movie, uh, earlier in, in the podcast, and he and he gave love to everybody else. You know what was crazy? I thought about too when I I rewatched it. How comfortable Trey was. In the hood still. Yes. Right? Even though all that stuff was going on and he was fed up, he was still comfortable. Mm-hmm. Number one, because he did not want to move back in with his mom. Mm-hmm. Number two, I don't even think y'all noticed this. When he was taking the, the tray, the food to his pops, the they kid. drew down on him in the mm-hmm. middle yeah. of the street. Yeah. He sat there. He sat there. Mm-hmm. And then right after that, went there and took the plate into it to his pops and didn't even bring it up. Didn't, didn't even bring it up. But here's the thing, bro. That's so solid. Nigga. Bro, he did. That's so solid. He didn't go in the house and be like, Daddy. Yeah, they just drew down. You won't believe. That's a good point. <laughs> Mark and drove off. Yeah. yeah that's bro. a good point. And it's, it's sad because growing up in not just LA, but just in the hood, mm-hmm. bro, you know how many times I, I, I got a gun put bro. on? Me? Yeah. Yeah. Nigga, I talked about it in the no. song. I was like, I bro. didn't even run. It was more, it was like, mm-hmm. you gonna do it. I, yeah. I, Who yeah, knows? I got desensitized to it. The first time it happened, mm-hmm. nigga, I did a pistol myself in the third grade. Yeah. I'm I'm with my sister, bro. Nigga pull his gun, pull a gun and put it in my face. Mm-hmm. I'm looking in the barrel. I, I see the rust. Mm-hmm. I'm like, I froze. And I, I just feel my sister hold me tight. She just squeezed me tight. Mm-hmm. I, I wasn't in the third grade. I'm sorry. That's the first time I got robbed. I was probably like in the sixth grade. And I just sat there. Not like I was tough, but yeah. I was petrified. Yeah. It's broad. They like, it's people at the bus stop with us. Freeze you. And I'm like, what's going to happen? He was, singing, he was singing pistol grip, pump, pump all that belt all the time. He was singing volume 10. Mm-hmm. And he was just looking at me. And he was, and he was sitting next to me. I think he just pulled it out and put it in my face. And I'm like, and then he put it away and walked off. Yeah. And I was like, baby, are you okay? All oh, the yeah. people around me, were you okay? I was like. Yeah, you might nigga, be there. I had two drops, of, nigga, in my drawers, mm-hmm. bro. My yeah, yeah. Boxes, bro. I was That's like, terrifying. Like, yeah, That's fucking terrifying. Yeah. And that was sixth grade. Yeah, and, I, and ever, ever since then, bro, I'm like, I wonder why I've never been shot before, bro. Never been shot. See, I thought about that too, bro. Because there's so many instances, drive bys, house being shot up, yeah. bullets going through the house. I had mm-hmm. a, I kept this bullet. I still have it to this day. <clears throat> they did a drive by on my on my grandma crib, mm-hmm. and this is where we was living at at the time. And this is the one of the moments where I felt like. I really, cause I was I was living back in Linwood. I moved to Linwood with my mm. people. So 
and where we lived at, the houses, it was a lot of activity. It was a yeah. lot of stuff going yeah. on over there, yeah. bro, a lot. To the point to where if I come bringing home groceries, my brother got to meet me on the porch with the burner or my dad got to meet me on the porch with the burner. Mm -hmm. Or he like, hey, cuz, let me know, if, you know what I'm saying? Right. This particular night, I was going to the gym. I had just got this part in this uh, student film and I was going to tell my mom and dad about it. Yeah. I'm walking from the back house to the house. So basically from the back door, it's a straight shot to the front door. Right. So I'm walking out the front door, it's dark at this time. I had an 86 Chevy Suburban uh, parked in the front, an all white one. Mm -hmm. And I'm parked right in front of the house. And I never parked, my dad used to tell me, don't park that big motherfucker in front of the house in case you got to jump in it. Some niggas ride by, you know what I'm saying? You go you be up the street somewhere, you know what I'm saying? Right. So you can see niggas coming because we stayed mm -hmm. right on the corner. Mm -hmm. I was walking out the front door, bro. And some told me, go tell your moms and your pops about this new role. And I didn't really think they cared much, but I was like, let me keep creating an opportunity for them to be excited for mm -hmm. me. Yeah. So I go into the room and I said, uh, my dad was laying on his stomach watching TV. My mom was sitting up in the bed reading a book. I said, um, hey, y'all just got this part. So my dad was like, no shit. And I'm like, yeah. And my mom's like, what is it? So I'm telling them about it. Baka, 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 baka. I hit the floor. My dad roll off the bed, reach under the mattress, run out to the front door. After everything get cleared, now remind you, we had he had a couple of his homies in the front yard chilling because our house is the kicking spot. Mm -hmm. It was normal, you know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. So some of them was stumbling into the door, you know what I'm saying? I'm bear crawling and shit. My dad stepping over me. Yeah. This was happening a lot, bro. Yeah. This particular time, I didn't go to. I did, of course, I didn't leave to the gym. I went back into the back house and I sat on my bed and I looked down and there was a bullet at my bed, bro. It went all the way through the front glass. Rick and I've traced it back, you know what I'm saying? Because mm -hmm. it was coming, it came through the wall. Off the fridge, you know what I'm saying? Came through the wall, skint off the wall where my desk was at. I had my desk facing the wall, like here. The, the drywall was skint off, and it landed in my bed, bro. Yeah. And at that moment, I was like, damn. I done had guns put on me, house been shot. Mm -hmm. I wonder why I've never been, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, Not that I wanted to happen. Oh, yeah, yeah. But, yeah, man, yeah. It's, but it's, it's, a, so, it's a razor's I edge. Bad. It's an anxiety because I've been knowing niggas that have been shot. Yeah. yeah. And I'm like, damn, why I never, God forbid. I mean, yeah. I'm glad I, I thank God. Think about it like this. Tragic fucking story. But a razor's edge of circumstances that keep you from being safe versus unsafe. Right. Think about all the things that if they had happened, just in those moments, mm. Ricky would have still been alive, right? Yeah. Like think if he, about if, he, if they wouldn't have split up, he would have been alive. Because because Doe was coming down mm -hmm. the alley the other way. Mm -hmm. He was walking. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. my Ricky was walking towards them. Yeah. yeah. If Damn. if Ricky stops to see his test scores. Right? Right. Because his mom, his mom is hollering. Yeah, the I thought about that too. Ricky, I got your test scores, baby. I, I got your test scores. If he just turns around yeah. to see how he did on that test. Yeah, but he was too high. Him and his he, brother just got into yeah. a fight. Yeah, but, but he would have lived. Right? Yeah. He would have lived. Um, shit, man. If, if, if he wouldn't have stopped and took a piss. If he wouldn't have stopped and took a piss. If he had came directly out and, had, and the first thing he said was to Trey, come with me to the store, man. Instead of to do, yeah. why don't you go to the store with me? Yeah. Like the timing could have been that that a off. Couple seconds Just off. a couple yeah. of seconds yeah. off. Because it goes back to what we were saying about Trey. Who was the one that noticed danger first? It was Trey. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Ricky is yeah. on the scratchers. Yeah. He's yeah. on the mill. He don't even notice danger. But if you think about all those things that could have just happened slightly different. But that goes back to Ricky's character because he was slight childish. Still. Yes. You know what I'm saying? In the midst and, of all and, this going on, you still, you got to take a piss. And nigga, coddle. Nigga, piss on yourself, nigga. They trying yes. to get it. You, really, you got to, you can't yeah. hold it. He still wasn't taking hey, it. Hey, man, serious. they ain't going to do nothing. Yeah. Just showing out and shit. But by far, the saddest death yeah, in black bro. movie history. Yeah, bro. Not, yeah, bro. No, but nothing like when Ricky got shot. And that's, it's, it's iconic now for people to, he Ricky. Called him Ricky. Yeah. Yeah. And the nigga, man. The first one hit the quad. And after, football and after, career after done. That, that right. left, that, that football left career done. That's the first thing I thought yes. I said, life over. He yeah. can't even go to the army now. Yeah. And then after that, it ended. Quad done. Next yeah. Day. His back. Chewed yeah. his back up. Um, By the same dude that pulled the, the gauge on 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 uh on Trey. On Trey in the beginning of the mm -hmm. movie. Yeah. The same dude. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's like, damn, bro. Yeah. But that's what makes, at that point, this movie goes from being a drama to almost a Western, right? Like, you know, right. because the ride out feels very much like a Western. Yeah, the horses. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you well, know, the, the horses yeah. hop out. Yeah. yeah, the guys, you know, they hop in the car, monsters loading the clip. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. you know, nobody's saying anything, looking, looking for them. 
like wow. looking for him, very much like a Western. Um, Trey's decision to get out makes sense because it's a no, no, no. Mm-hmm. Speaking on that, I want to talk about that. I'm yeah. glad you brought that up. Trey's, this, I don't feel like Trey. I feel like Trey was very passionate in the moment, but I really don't feel like Trey really wanted to. I feel like he felt like he needed to, yeah, to mm-hmm. prove him to prove himself because yeah. you got to think about it. When he was loading the bullets on the side of the bed, mm-hmm. and he came out with the, you knew your pops was gonna stop you yeah. and not yeah. let you go. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? You could have hopped out the window at that point. Could have went the other way. Could have mm-hmm. went the other way. Mm-hmm. But you, he saw that loaded up and then came with the gun like, yeah. Come on, you think your dad gonna step aside mm-hmm. and come? That's furious. We no talking way. about yeah. no way. You didn't. You didn't no really want to bring happen. your gun. Give me the yeah. motherfucking guns, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. He wanted. He he wanted to have that. You know what I'm saying? But again, like I felt like when he said, "Get out, let me out the car." By that time, the adrenaline came down. You know what I'm saying? It set in. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He's he thought saying, of, nigga. I I thought it was great filmmaking because they keep cutting back and forth from the guys in the car. And furious, yeah, when, when, right. Yeah. I wanted them motherfuckers yeah. so bad. I wanted them I so bad. Them, right? I got some now because of that. Yes, nigga, me too. <laughs> yeah, I, said, me too. I said, oh yeah, <laughs> stress relievers, bro. And yeah. to me, it was like when they were jumping back and forth. It was like Furious was saying, "I've raised you Better to this. make yeah. good decisions." We just mm. had the scene of him mm. talking to his ex wife, yes, Reva. Mm-hmm. I'm assuming they was married. Mm. This is say they were, mm-hmm. um, and she, we. I've raised him to make his own to decisions. To make the he's right like, decisions. He's not a kid anymore. Yes. Damn. And, and, I didn't catch that. And, and, and then when Trey gets out, it's because... That's when it stops. That's when it stops, when he gets out, because the decision, Trey makes the right decision Let me to, out. to get out the car. Let me out. Doe respects his request. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's another thing. Mm-hmm. Didn't call him a buster. Didn't call him a buster. That. And he, didn't that's say how you anything. know that was really his brother. Yes. Yeah. Monster got out... out even Monster, subtle shit. Yeah. Monster got out, let him out, and didn't even look back. He got yeah. right back in the car. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, this is, nigga, it's happening. It's yeah. happening. Yeah. This is going down. And yeah, I think, bro. and I think everybody in the car, I th- oh, such a good movie. I think everybody in the car understood why Trey was in the mm-hmm. car mm-hmm. to begin with, mm-hmm. but also understood why he needed to get out the car. Yes. And everybody understood also, even furthermore, some things don't have to be. Said yes. Yeah. When, when Trey came home, Furious came out and looked at him, mm-hmm. and he can look at his son and tell mm-hmm. he didn't do what he. What, yep. You know what I'm saying? Yep. He walked in the room and closed the door. Yep. True. I'm Furious. mad you left, mm-hmm. but I'm not happy with you. Yeah, mm-hmm. I'm not giving you no fucking hug. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, gave you, I did that already. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. And and so I feel like Trey. Uh, I feel like Furious. The end. To go back to what you, what you were saying about him not being shit, him not really giving mm-hmm. giving to his block, yeah. the youngsters. Mm-hmm. He's a very hard person. He yeah. was like, he, I think in his mind, he was like, I made this son. Yes. Yeah. He's my problem. Yeah. Y'all niggas got to figure it out. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because I grew up yeah. the same way, mm-hmm. and I had homies that ended up starting robbing and killing niggas. Yeah. yeah. Like I was about yeah. to do it, too. I said, nah, I'm not going to. I'm about to have my, a son. I'm about to have a son. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I think he was, even when his son came back, he wasn't like, oh, you made the right decision, son. Come yeah. give me a hug. Not He's, even just that. He was going a step, like, sorry to interrupt you, going a step further about what you were saying about Furious told Trey as a kid, mm-hmm. the army ain't no place for, you know what I'm saying? And, and then Trey man. told that to Ricky, and Ricky was not trying to hear that. So that yeah. further goes to where even if Furious did try to, the mm-hmm. information was there. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? The, the opportunities for growth was there for, yeah. for Doe and Ricky if they really, really wanted it. Mm-hmm. But I feel like they both grew up into who they really were. You know what I'm saying? Right. Who they were. Trey was, has always been Trey. Yeah. Doe has always been Doe, and Ricky's always been Ricky. An mm-hmm. interesting note. So the studio. Don't ask and cry when he went to jail. Yeah, yeah. I'm as sorry. a kid. Right. No, um, Columbia Columbia Pictures gave John Singleton two notes. The first note is is that they wanted Doughboy and Ricky to get into a fight before Ricky gets shot. Mm. John put that in the movie. The second note that the studio wanted was for Trey and Furious to have a conversation after. Trey had come back in after getting out the car mm. with the guys. And John Singleton refused to do that. Right? Damn. Like, you know, he wanted that to be like that. That unspoken. Yeah. And that's what's so interesting. So much isn't said from, from the car, from basically, mm-hmm. from, the, from the moment that, like, Trey hops in the car. There's a couple of little beats, monster is cold and a motherfucker out here. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. you know. What the motherfuckers at? Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. Cold but but for the most part, like hardly any dialogue. 
so much doesn't need to be said because so much is being said already. And then the next day, when Doe comes over, yeah. Doe says, I understand why you got out the car last yeah. night. Yeah. You shouldn't have been there anyway. Yeah. You don't want that shit haunting back you, to haunt right? You. Like, yeah. you know, just a beautiful fucking movie. The dialogue, man. the writing. Just a beautiful movie. And, and the fact that John Singleton is a, a young black man from L.A., Mm -hmm. Um, he wrote that. He wrote that probably from perspective, from a like, firsthand experiences. Um, and he, honestly speaking, sometimes as a game banger, you don't see what everybody else sees. Mm -hmm. like, I was the kid that had all the game banging homies around me, and I saw my watch them. I, I saw the regular Dang. kids. I, I was the regular kid. I seen the hood niggas. I seen the homeboy. My, I seen the homies that I known since I was eight years old. That now we thirteen. And these niggas is on the set now. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And the mm -hmm. conversations we was having beforehand. Well, I'm going to get put on because my brothers got put on. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And you know you want to get put on. No, I ain't getting put on. Nigga, don't be scared. I ain't scared. I'm not going to do that shit. Right. You're going to have to, nigga. Everybody in your family is cripping, nigga. Mm -hmm. yeah. You got to do it. And this is the homie do, telling the other homie, yeah. you're going to do it. I'm about to be put on your set, nigga. I only Because I'm, I'm about to be your your brother's little homies. Yeah. And you're going to have to be that. Mm -hmm. I've seen niggas be like, hey, bro, how you going to be from the set, nigga? And your homeboy's from the set. And you my actual little brother. Yeah. He's my little homie, but you yeah. my little brother. You ain't trying to be from the set. Mm -hmm. That peer pressure. That but peer again, like you said, when it was letting Trey be Trey. Mm -hmm. They try to he try to hand Trey the beer if he yeah. was the like, nah. yeah, yeah. 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 they, yeah. they knew what yeah. type of nigga he was. Yeah. And, and, and even on top, a peer pressure. That's, that's why you call it peer pressure. Yeah. Right. But it was so casual. I love that. I yeah. love that interaction. That was so dope. Because Dookie knew how Dookie knew he wasn't <laughs> fucking with <laughs> right, it. Right, right, right. And the way the way Trey just kind of like shoot it off. Yeah. Like nigga, stop stop fucking around. You know what I mean? Like, you know I ain't on that shit. I, you know, but but we still on the stoop together. Yeah, I love Dookie's <laughs> character, bro. I wish it was yeah. a part two. Dookie's interesting. Nigga, that's crazy. Nigga. I used to steal pacifiers, bro. Yeah, <laughs> that was a thing. This is that era. That was, was a thing. Was yeah, like, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Niggas like I used to. And then when he got his, his chain snatched and he politely, just subtly walked yeah, across yeah, the street. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, fuck him up, fuck him up. Nah, yeah, like, that yeah. shit was, mm -hmm. I was like, that's per the, it was executed. Per you don't need to run over to do the ex. Mm -hmm. Homies only They did that already. They yeah. did it already. Yeah. But you're going to feel this trash can. A lot, a lot can be said. Like, Doughboy's crew was solid as fuck. Solid. solid. They was solid yeah, as nigga. fuck. Yeah. Doughboy's crew was solid. And I'm going to keep it 100. And this is why... A lot of times, the street life, nigga, like, it's exciting. Yeah. A lot of kids yeah. want to do it. Yeah. It's stupid as hell. Yeah. I was one of them kids that I used to be praised for being tough. Right. Mm -hmm. And he going to be a hit, nigga. That nigga should be from the second. Yeah. This little he nigga got heart. He got heart. Yeah. So I was yeah. like, yeah. but I had a dad. I had a fear of styles at the crib. And that, mm -hmm. would be, that would go left if I gained bang. And that's really why I didn't do it. Um, but these boys... It's the camaraderie, it's the loyalty yeah. that attracts a lot of people. Mm -hmm. When you see two or three, four niggas walk down the block yeah. wearing the same flag, they were throwing solid. up the same set, and had each other's backs, you 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 look at that and be like, oh, these niggas is like a young mm -hmm. militant yeah, ass street yeah. niggas. Yeah, I want to yeah. be a part of that. And you want to be a part of that. So, it, so the game bank life can, especially for a boy who don't have no love at the yeah. crib, mm -hmm. and has misguided in, uh, instructions on how to live, he is going to gravitate towards that. That's yeah. why so many niggas getting put on every day. Yeah. Before we get into the awards, I've got one little nitpick on this movie. How fast was little Chris in that wheelchair? Right. <laughs> My friend asked me that. When they were running. But have you seen him? But have you seen the nigga yeah. in you the wheelchair? Yeah. She said those niggas hop. Have you seen a nigga bunny hop onto a curb? Yeah. My wheelchair? Yeah. The only the niggas move. Yeah. The only call out was when Doe and the crew hop into the I'm hit, about, to, into I'm the about whip, to comment on that. Right? They hit the gas, <laughs> mash out. You see Chris. They mashing down the, the alley. Chris arrives literally like 10 seconds after they Nigga. arrived. They How fast the was though. he getting this? They, they, they the went around the corner and he's rolling. Mm -hmm. and, and my friend asked me when we was watching, she said, wait, so... He just, is he going to meet him there? And mm -hmm. I said, yeah. They're yeah. going to, in yeah. that wheelchair, he moved He was in. dipping. And, and on Bro, top of that, he had to be dipping. Shoulders and his, oh, but you yeah. see, Chris, Chris got Chris, it. Chris was, Chris was yeah. Really, yeah. He got, a, he got yeah. armor on. That's he's speed. slow. He was dipping. He was speed in the wheelchair, he was Bro. He's a, He is one of the, the most interesting characters. He's a little Chris is an interesting yeah, character. Yeah. He was interesting as a, as kid. a kid. He was mm -hmm. interesting he as a, a kid. Burner that age. Yeah, yeah. That age my give, give, me a, give me a deuce deuce. 
What kind of gun your daddy got? Deuce, deuce. But the way he told Furious $5, that ain't shit. Yeah, ain't right? Shit, like, <laughs> like <laughs> for a kid to be like, nigga, $5 ain't shit. At that age. I mean, he said, I could make that doing nothing. nothing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> he 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 knew what, it, what, what, what the dead bodies were. Yeah. He knew what the dead he bodies were. He knew the niggas on the block. They was like, Lil Chris, tell him I'll give him his ball back. Right? Yeah, like, you know. He like, um, and he was like, always reading. Like, yeah. like, like, you know, a lot of times they showed him he was chilling. He was looking at a magazine. Yeah. He was reading. He was astute. You know what I mean? He was the one that called out. She treat him. She treat Doe differently. Mm-hmm. It's because they got different daddies. Mm-hmm. Right? Like, you know, yeah. That's Dookie said that. Dookie, he, he, he uh, Dookie, he, he finished it. He mm-hmm. said, he, he, don't treat, he don't treat Ricky like that. Yeah. And Dookie was like, that's because they got different daddies. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah you're absolutely right. Catch yeah. That. Yeah. They knew, like, the homies be knowing, bro. Like, yeah. they watch. Mm-hmm. And, like, Dookie, like you said, there there was a, a unit monster was a that nigga had to put the beanie on because he was in he was in monster mode. Yeah. He put the beanie yeah. on. I'm ready to go. Yeah, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying. They came. But in even there. even talking about the loyalty that Doe had with his homies, first thing he said when he really he seen them niggas on the corner, he said, "Man, bring little Chris up on the porch." Yeah, these niggas. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Because yeah. hey, everybody not thinking that the other yeah. homies wasn't thinking that mm-hmm. at all. They still trying yeah. to think. But Doe knew, man, get him up on the porch because yeah. they might trip. Because yeah. if they do. Lil Chris gone for and sure. When, yeah. And when he's they the was first to go, he's the first to go. And when when they was hanging out on Crenshaw, who was the first person that Trey dapped? Monster. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Monster was in the car before. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Like yeah. you know, the crew was solid. Yeah, yeah. it was a the, solid the, crew. The, the crew was solid. Okay, let's get. Monster it. was probably the nigga that came over to Ricky and said, "What happened?" They were stealing. Yeah. That was probably Monster. Yeah. <laughs> With the I was curl? thinking that. Yeah. That yeah. was Monster. I was nigga. thinking that. Uh-huh. I said, you know I said, saying? how many? I said, I said. This is the original crew from when they was kids. Oh mm-hmm. yeah, stomp down like the, yeah. I, I've, I've known you since I was eight, bro. Yeah, yeah. If, if, now we it 20. felt like it felt like Dookie was the, was the new nigga because of the way Q was quizzing him. You know how to play spades. You know what I mean? Like yeah. you know, like you wouldn't uh-huh. ask a homie. You don't. No, 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 no. The only reason why I say that is because he just got out of jail. Yeah. You know what I'm so saying? he didn't know. He, he was in out. He so, didn't know. Mm-hmm. He was, ah, this so is so true. He learned how to this play in true. jail. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. This is true. Dominoes. Yeah. Let's play space. It could have been Duke. That could have been Dookie. Like yeah, and he was in the pen. Mm-hmm. So he yeah. didn't go for he was a in minute. the pen. You yeah. know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. He might have yeah. two, three years. Okay, let's get into some awards. <sighs> Who was the MVP of Boys in the Hood? The most valuable person, actor, Furious character. Styles. You think Furious Styles? Yes. I, I would. I would say. I would say Doughboy. Okay. I would say Doughboy because he he literally remained himself from a child all the way up to an adult, but he still, though he had a good heart, he was still a product of his of, of his environment. You know what I'm saying? I feel like he was just honestly, in my opinion, he was just trying to survive, bro. He's a he was a part of he was a product mm-hmm. of his choices. Yeah. 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 And, and here's the thing: some people say, man, I grew up in the hood too. I'll never tell somebody, hey, I grew up, because I grew up in the worst places, my nigga, mm-hmm. and I, I took two buses to get to elementary school. Yeah. And I, I, from 94th to Vermont, nigga, I'm taking the RTD mm-hmm. to Vermont and Vernon, getting a transfer and going from Vernon Fucking all the way down transfer. to 42nd Street. Yep. You know what I'm saying? So transfer I'm taking- slip. Yeah, the slip, yeah. Mm-hmm. So and then that's that's Damn. just the middle, middle school. And then I was going to Audubon, and I was going, so mm-hmm. by myself- I didn't have no big brother. I didn't have no gang with me. So I, I've been ran off. I didn't jump. I didn't been packed out. I didn't. I didn't. I've done it all. I've yeah. been through the worst situations, but I also had my crib, my parents. Yeah, that's a huge place. thing. Yeah. Yeah. So mm-hmm. the reason why I turned out the way I am, I could have easily been a treacherous nigga on the block. You know what I'm saying? If I'd have had no guidance, or if I, I was afraid of my pops, really. Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? And my pops wasn't the. I wasn't following in his footsteps. A lot of these niggas is grandfathered into game banging because their daddy was a game banger. Everybody their uncles, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. They blah. My pops is from Ohio, you know what I'm saying? And he was a street dude, but he also by the time I came around, he was a he was a, a deacon at a church. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? He 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 had like I said, my dad was forty something, forty four when he had me. So by the time I'm ten years old and able to take direction, he's fifty something. So now I got I got, I have Malcolm X at the crib. Same. Yeah. I mean, he, just like, just like he already been the street nigga. He already went went to the penitentiary mm-hmm. and came back yeah. and became a a, vi- a, a a valid nigga now. Yeah, a, a responsible person that's gonna teach his son the right shit. A lot of these boys didn't have it. They didn't have no guidance. They got mamas telling them telling them that they ain't shit. So the options are very limited for Doughboy. boy. You yeah, know but saying? that's he, the reason why mm-hmm. Trey went to go stay with Furious in the first place. Boom. Because of that. Because got to think about it. 
If they would have found them niggas at the time when Trey was still hot, before he said get out the car, he would have been involved for sure, for sure. Oh, he's done. He, he would have been involved. Yeah. I, boy, this is difficult because I understand Furious Styles as MVP. Being a father to these boys, yeah, yeah. probably one of the most important lessons yeah. that mm-hmm. needs to happen. I understand there's an argument that could be made that Trey is the MVP. Mm-hmm. Yeah, of course. But I think it's Doughboy. Right. Mm. And I think it's because Doughboy brought out the humanity and a character that had never been portrayed yeah. before. I think it was important for audiences to, to not see, see Doughboy as a monster, yeah. as, you know, heartless, as unredeemable. I think we needed his story. Trey's story is important, but it's kinda, we don't yeah, need to yeah, know. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, we can relate for us non, you know, yeah. gangbanging, you know, people. Like, we can, like, Trey is easily the most relatable character, I think, to a lot of people. But I think Doughboy's character was most important. Shit, Doughboy is probably the most relatable. It's more niggas yeah. like Doughboy than yeah. us. But, I like rem- you, but like you said, a lot of niggas want to be seen. And a lot of people don't know that side mm-hmm. of these cats. And Doe wanted to be seen. You yeah. know what I'm saying? He wanted to be seen by his brother. Mm-hmm. As, a, as a big brother, he wanted to be seen by his mom, mom. As, a as a son. You know what I'm saying? He wanted to be seen by his homies as the smart one that actually mm-hmm. did. When I was locked up, I learned some shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, let me, read. Let me, mm-hmm. Yeah, let me read. Yeah, read. <laughs> I ain't, no, I ain't no criminal nigga. I can't read, yeah, bitch. Yeah, so he wanted to be seen and respected as such. I remember so, being in the theater when the when the text came across and it was like two weeks later, he died. Uh, I remember the the the, the theater gas, yeah, nigga. right? Like, you know, Damn. and I think like it's because you grew to understand Man. Doughboy. Yeah. And I think understanding Doughboy is essentially understanding the boys in the hood. Yeah. Right? Like, I just I just think it was fundamentally yeah. important. Nobody walks away from that movie talking about Trey. Right? Like, you know, you talk about Ricky dying. Yeah, I think you do. But, but in a sense. In a sense. Yeah. Like, but but nobody talks about, you know, like, damn, like, you know, Trey, Trey had a great life. Or you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> like, you know, like, nah, no, dude. like you walk away from that, like fucking Ricky Baker died. Yeah. And Doughboy died. Yeah. That's kind of like how you walk. So I think. I think Doughboy is the MVP. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. I like it. LVP, who's the least valuable player, least valuable actor, least valuable character in Boys in the Hood. Um, This one's hard because, like, yeah. everybody played a part. Everybody yeah. had to play a part. Even when he was like, give me the ball. Mm-hmm. He gave it back to yeah. him. Sharif, like nigga. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> Sharif. I love to see Sharif play the the, the, the passive, mm-hmm. yeah. militant black man in Menace. Mm-hmm. I said, oh, yeah. They re- he redeemed himself yeah. by being, he was a villain. I hated Sharif, nigga. Mm-hmm. There was a thousand Sharifs. No, well, his name wasn't Sharif in Boys. Right. There was a thousand niggas like him in the hood, bro. Every time you, let me ride your bike. Hey, yo, yo, little man, can't throw me the ball. Craziest part. I hated those I've niggas, I've seen this bro. as an adult, bro, and it took me back to my child. I was working at a club, and this one cat that would come to the club, he was a bully. I ain't going to say where he was from. He was a bully. But every time I seen him, I knew, you know what I'm saying? I was like, he finna, he finna fuck with me. He never fuck with me, though. You know what I'm saying? Because I gave him that energy. Like, he, he asked where I was from. I told him. He was like, okay, our people. Da, 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 da. This one cat came up. Super cool guy. Super cool. You know those guys in the hood? Mm-hmm. They say, like, man, leave him alone. Leave him. He cool. Leave him alone. He was on a uh, on the little uh, two wheeler scooters. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. This one they, back when he hit the streets again, it was hot again. And we was in the front. I was talking to him, and the bully dude walk up. He's like, "What up, bro?" I'm like, "What up, bro?" We chopping up. And he looked at old boy. He was like, "Man, that shit hard. Where you get that shit from?" And we grown, bro. And I instantly knew it took me back to my childhood. I said, he finna ask to ride it. No, he finna press to ride it. So he's like, uh, where you get that from? He was like, oh man, this ain't even mine. I'm this taking me back to my childhood. He don't well, want you to that, ride that it. That ain't what I asked you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he said, let me ride it, bro. I said, damn, I stepped oh. back. He was like, nah, man, I can't even say it. That's how you gonna act, my nigga. And I looked at him, I looked at old boy. I was like, he don't want you to ride it, bro. Cause I felt like in that moment mm-hmm. he was gonna take, he was mm-hmm. gonna, you know what I'm saying? Cause old boy was already taking one leg off the mm-hmm. man. I don't know, man. I was like, yeah. the humble, <laughs> the humble yeah. harmonies, my nigga. I, I'm, I'm saying, hey, my, it's, it's, when he put yeah. his hand on the steering wheel, I mean, on, on a handlebar, and you got your hand on the steel, then that means take your hand off and get off the bike, bro. Mm-hmm. So I was like, bro, he don't want you to ride. When niggas start, niggas grab your handlebar, but I'm, yeah. I'm just gonna go to the block and come around. Yeah, it's already over. I ain't gonna, gonna take it, my nigga. Already over. When they grab it in the middle and start doing this. Okay. Trauma. 
Trauma. Start <laughs> rocking you on the bike like PTSD. Man, bro. Damn. PTSD. Man. I'll bring it right back. Yeah, I'll be, um, right back. They get the yanking up the yeah, yeah. Like you fall backwards, nigga. That's it. Your head. That's it. Uh, I hate I hate yeah. being over here. I hate, uh, <laughs> I hate it here. Yeah, I hate where it you here. live. I'm going back to Pasadena, See, I, man. Yeah, my was my neighborhood was like, bro, we don't like going over there, bro. Yeah, yeah. until until I mean, well, my, that's not my my block was cool because I was cool on my block. Mm-hmm. Right? Anybody that came over there was cool with me. It's my cousin. Oh, yeah. yeah, that's what's up. Yeah. But anywhere over the ninety fifth, ninety sixth street, yeah, you can't go. To, can't you, go it was just, it was just so easy to get whatever you had commandeered, right? Yes, like you know, what I mean? <laughs> that's such a, that's yeah. such a, uh, yeah. it's, it's, it's just yeah. a lax it's way a, of saying. But, but you said, it. let's go find you a bike. You said that, yeah, earlier. oh, bro, because we turned into that because we was getting, you know, what yeah. I'm saying because you was gonna get your shit taken in a in a variety of different ways, yes. right? Yeah. Like sometimes it would be you would have your shit strong armed, yeah. right? Like so, and, and your mom you told you not to take now, it outside. Yeah. Other times it would be strongly suggested that you let me borrow <laughs> so, your shit, yeah. right? Like you yeah. know, let, I'll, I'll be right back. I'll just like be right around the, Yeah, exactly. But I'm just sleeping right. in my crib. Right, right. You so, see a nigga riding mm-hmm. your shit around, nigga? Yeah. So, nigga, you so that's, you used to get something new and your mom used to be like, don't take that shit outside. Side, don't take it outside. Because it was going it was, it, it was, was going to come up missing nigga, somehow. Yeah. So my shit, bikes got, my, my, my bikes got taken, stolen. Our house got robbed. Yeah. Bro, I became a bike thief, man. Damn. Yeah, bro. I was one of those. That's fucked uh, up. I became bitter. I was a bitter kid. I was a bitter nigga. Like, if I can't have one, you yeah, can't have one either. We got ride in broad daylight. Yeah. Mm. And I saw, I saw, I know niggas that know me mm-hmm. know how, what happened. Mm-hmm. Right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I got my bike stole. Right. Snatching bikes yeah. up. Get niggas off bikes. Yeah. Pillowcasing yeah. niggas off bikes. Yeah. I tell you. Pillowcasing. Yeah, man. <laughs> this is, I, I'm assuming that, well, first of all, this, this is what, 20 something years later? Pillowcasing niggas yeah. off bikes. Oh, you get a pillowcase, nigga. They don't see you too. Yeah. It's crazy, bro. It, it's, it's even the, the forceful, you start getting on while he on all that. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> That's fucking funny. <laughs> yeah, bro. It's That's fucking funny. You got your leg. Yeah. yeah. He's sitting down the yeah. Yeah. That's, uh, let me, let me, come on, bro. Hey, you low key on nigga lap. Yeah, bro. Hey, bro he done, back, he done nigga. low key pushed <laughs> you. <laughs> yeah, he done low key pushed you off the seat. Now yeah. you trying to on your tippy toes you, on the bar. Yeah. Now you sit on the tire, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> if you take off, you gonna see tire burn on your ball. Like you got boxed out of the seat. That's fucking funny. That's a little <laughs> boxed out yeah, yeah. of your own, oh, your seat. own shit. You oh, commandeer. Oh, you got your shit commandeer. Okay, LVP. Who's the oh, LVP? This movie is so great. Yeah. It's, all right, so LVP. I'll give you mine. And you guys Go may ahead. want to co-sign. The mailman, right? The mailman yeah. that gave the letter yeah. to he, mom. He, he wants to be seen bad, had he been, Had the mailman been better at his job, he would have arrived with that letter 10 uh-huh. minutes earlier, <laughs> and, and, and no. they would have been going out to Sizzler instead of eating fish. He was there. Mm-hmm. He was getting. He was walking down the street with his satchel, with mm-hmm. a full of mail, and he saw as he's walking up, he saw Doughboy push Chris down the stairs, mm-hmm. and he stopped and watched. Yeah, nah, nigga, do your job. Yeah, because yeah. hey, just yo, that hey, one yo, little thing. Chill out real quick. Is your mom in there, man? Here's <laughs> mm-hmm. the mail for your mom. Yeah, he's like, mm, you right? Because his con- like his actions. You know what I mean? I like, was finna say the nigga that dropped his converse after getting shot at. They, 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 they tried to rob Fury's house. That was, yeah. a, that was a burnt mission. Burnt mission, nigga. Yeah. Yeah. That was yeah. a burnt yeah. mission, nigga. Yeah. And out of all the homes. The thing is, right. <laughs> yeah, like, why? Bro. Yeah. I think I heard that. He heard that. That, mm-hmm. that nigga out of Dodge. Yeah. yeah. He didn't even, he, he didn't even mm-hmm. go out the way he came in. He went out through the front door. Yeah. The the obvious LVP all the time is is the uh, self hating cop. I was just oh, gonna say that. Yeah, bro. you know, fuck him, the Uncle Ruckus. Yeah, yeah, Uncle yeah. Ruckus, bro. Yeah, bro, for yeah. real, man. Yeah. Now you think you tough? You think you, you tough? Crunch on mafia, motherfucker. Nah, you wanna no, roll the sixties. Um, who wins the overacting award? For that scene when he came home, when he came to Brandy's house, <laughs> before he pounded her yeah. out, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? He knew, well, come on, come at me, man. Yeah. I said, ooh. I watched it as a boy. I was like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, you yeah. felt it, yeah, when he was a kid. As a yeah. man, as a, I wasn't an actor yet. I wasn't a yeah. director yet. Yeah. I was like, yeah. mm. <laughs> I might have to give Cuba yeah. a different uh, different choice to make. Mm-hmm. Yeah. As, but nah, let's do it again. Yeah, yeah, let's do it Please again. Please decide, bro. Give yeah. me. Yeah. Fuck this shit, man. Fuck this shit. Yeah. Maybe sock soccer. We gonna make this wall mm-hmm. real easy for you to sock a hole in the wall. Maybe yeah, something. Yeah. something. But yeah, swinging the air yeah. and yeah. yeah. Uh, for I me- get the frustration though. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, uh, the worst acting in this movie is by Little Ricky. 
Um, like, 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 oh. yeah. But go I don't ahead. know why you said Lil Chris. I don't say Lil Chris. Yeah, no, Lil Ricky. Ricky. But go ahead, Ricky. tell mama. You know what I mean? Like you know, tell mama, I don't care. Yeah, okay. And and didn't catch the ball. Like now, you know, is that I, is that? Uh, I feel like that was on purpose. That's Eddie Winslow's brother, yeah, that's right? His little brother. Is it, it's real. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah his little he brother. Look like him yeah. too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Damn, mm-hmm. that's crazy. Yeah, like, but but I think it's Trey. I, I I think it's true. I mean Trey was able to cry on command, which yeah, as you yeah, guys know yeah, as actors yeah, is very yeah, important. Yeah. I didn't do nothing, yeah. right? Like you know the single tears, but yeah, yeah. I'll I'll, I, I'll I'll say what's his name is is the worst actor to me. Uh, what's his name? Uh, I don't, do we got a name? The the, the hit the blood the, the, the blood Ferris Jericho Ferris Ferris, Ferris, I, I Ferris Lee Blood yeah know? yeah. I didn't like him. Yeah, I, I didn't like him either. Yeah, I said, yeah. nah. Mm-hmm. And he was like, uh, what you doing tonight? He said, uh, was, you going with this punk or something. Yeah, he said. yeah. And I'm like, I don't know about uh, you. I'm going to my girl's house. You know what I mean? Like, nah. He was yeah, kind of yeah, cornball. Yeah, yeah, cornball. Cornball a little stiff. Yeah. 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 Like, yeah. I said, nah, you wasn't really giving that. Yeah. yeah. Man, but the only giving... way I'll accept it is he was an older dude, remember? He was older 27. And, and so this is 91. So this is still low key to the 80s. Yeah. So the freaks come out. You know what I'm saying? He's still from that era. And a so lot, maybe, you can see a lot of that in the hairstyles. Like, you know, asked him about yeah, cutting his hair. He yeah. said, man, I ain't never cutting my like hair. It was like Samson. I'm like, Samson, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. He reminded me of a Curtis Blow type nigga. Yeah. But I, I've never known. I, I Well, I mean, I didn't grow up in that. I'm from the 80s. Mm-hmm. But I, I didn't, his character didn't really give me shooter or air out the scene type. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Well, that's what they mm-hmm. kind of, like what they kind of alluded to what Regina King's character kind of alluded to was that uh, he's a buster he can't fight that's why he, he can't, always he yeah. can't fight he, yeah. he's still fucking with us kids that's yeah. what I'm saying like, yeah, like, yeah, the, yeah. like he just he, he just happened to have a so, certified shooter with him the, the, the young yeah. nigga the young yeah. nigga you know what I mean? Saying, the young niggas be the most ruthless. Though. Yes. Those niggas ain't been to jail yet. Yes. They ain't been yeah. they ain't, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. So that, they, and, and that young nigga never cracked a smile the whole movie. Even when they was at Eat a Burger, the, his yeah. only line was fuck that bitch. Right? Like, you yeah. know, like, like yeah. he was he's mad a, and angry. He was an intense nigga. Yeah. He was just you a, know who I thought he was? But then I was like, nah, it wasn't enough evidence or enough uh, scenes to, to make that be it. The original kid that Trey got into it with at the beginning of the, of the film. That, here's the thing. That's, he said he was from Crenshaw. That's the urban nigga. legend. Here's the thing. Them little niggas be uh, tenacious. Mm-hmm. Now, I ain't from Africa. I'm from Crenshaw Mafia. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What if that was the nigga at the end? Man. That would be amazing that storytelling. Would be a, that would be a cool it was like, when he first, piece he was of storytelling. The street, he was first crossing the street yeah. after to take the little baby to Teresa's house. Yeah. And then he says, Yeah. Mm-hmm. What up, Trey? Bitch ass nigga. Yeah. yeah. Off. I'm like, oh, that's low. That, that, that would that would have been, be, be mind yeah. blown. Because for a long time, I thought that Ferris was the same guy that took the ball from them when they were little. Nah. nah. Yeah. You know what I mean? But that then I remember old. the OG saying, hey, hey, Rob, give me the ball back. So yeah. you know what I mean? But that would be a cold. But see, that mm-hmm. relationship with them, it would have showed the dynamic of being really tight. And friends with somebody when you kids, mm-hmm. and then you grow up and not even happens deal with that. It happens. Yes. You know happens, what I'm saying? Yes. Getting smoked by niggas you grew up with and used to yeah. play with his kids. Because you got to remember, they was walking home from school together, and he told old girl, mm-hmm. she was like, uh, why it turned yellow like that? He's like, that's when the blood separates from, from the plasma. Mm-hmm. They was together. They was kicking it, and then yeah. they got into a fight. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. They never saw each other. But you, and you fight your homeboys. At that age, you mm-hmm. fight your yeah. homeboys, and y'all walk to school together the next day. Yeah. But he moved. But, if you yeah, fight them and y'all move away- He never went back to school. He never went back to school. He, he was never able to go back. So he could be, I, I knew a nigga. <laughs> For example, even in uh, Snowfall, I don't mm-hmm. know if y'all watched that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Man Boy and Franklin knew each other since they was little kids. Yeah. Remember? Yep. You know what I'm saying? He mm-hmm. says that. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They're the yeah. same age, around the same age. Man, then Man Boy, they left, he moved and moved to Compton. Mm-hmm. 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 He moved to Compton. <sighs> That's a good show. Because that's you know why a lot of cats were saying, like, oh, you wasn't even like that. You wasn't built like that. Da, 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 da. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I feel like Snowfall really, really, and I feel like this movie, aside from Snowfall, that's why I like Snowfall so much, is growing up in the 80s and having parents who was on that and, and, and dealt around that a lot. I was like, they did such a good job with, with the outfits, with the, outfits. With the slang mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. And, and, yeah. and, and the, the music, the, 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 the mu- everything. Yeah. Jerome, like, nigga, the, is Jerome, Jerome is a nigga out of my neighbor, bro. Yeah. His name is Fred. Yep. But Fred was younger. Fred was like Fred was like a little mm-hmm. tookie nigga. He was like 17, 18 years old, and I was 12. And he used to be huffing in the yard, bro. He, my apartment is right here. His apartment is right next door, but it was like a smaller complex than my mm-hmm. complex. Mm-hmm. And he used to always be in the front, huffing. I'd come home from school, 
He was like, you gonna get on, you gonna get on the bench, nigga? Mm-hmm. Nigga, I'm 12. Every time I'm like, I'll come out there and then mm-hmm. they put the little five pounds on there. Like, yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Trying to get it. But yeah, yeah. like, yeah, it yeah. was that. He would, but he had a curl. Yeah. And yeah. he had a box. He had a box he put onto his beach cruiser. He had a speaker in that bitch. Mm-hmm. And he had to be bumping on the beach cruiser, yeah. nigga. Yeah. I seen him knock a grown ass man out. So when, it's, yeah. Like, when, yeah. The, when the curl looked like the image on the box, the nigga was doing well, oh, yeah. right? Like oh, you know, yeah. but but it, yeah, patience. But, but a curl yeah. was hard to maintain, yeah, because because the new growth outgrow the product, yeah. like the new shit ain't texturized, right? Like you know, yeah. and it no ain't, boy was he was need, yeah, it wasn't dry, but it was it was the it was the new growth was coming in, yeah, yeah. it wasn't. He I saw when his hat came off, yeah. mom's zoning. Yeah. 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 I said, oh, it's kind of dry in the back. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You got to say okay, yeah. yeah. Um, okay, this should be the easiest one ever. Uh, we give the rankings, right? Like, you know, so on a scale of five black fists to one black fist, how do we rank boys in the hood? Five. Five. Six. Yeah. yeah. But six. Yeah. Five. Five. Yeah. We'll get into it later. I think because there are a lot of like hood movies that I think are ranked as five. Mm-hmm. I think this is the best one by far. Mm-hmm. I think it's better than for, all for of the, West the others. West Coast, too. You know what yeah. I mean? I, I just think it, this is the the signature film. Yeah, the like the most important film. You know they put the shit in though? the national archives. You know what's crazy though, for for us to feel like this about Boys in the Hood, and also have this same fucking feeling about Snowfall, mm-hmm. and it's from the same same you know guy from the same same guy, guy. Yeah. same guy, same story, and mm-hmm. it's it's being told twenty something years later. Yes. Yeah, by the same guy who's yeah. now a grown, grown, grown man. Yeah. Yeah, and it still feels the same. I feel yeah. like um, love his hood. He loves his hood, and he understands it. Yeah, I feel like, and I like the fact that Leon's from Atlanta, but yeah. Leon still made me feel like he was an LA nigga yeah. who had his head yeah. with a fro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I, I, he he he. I he got down kind of, with with Big D. You mm-hmm. know what I'm yeah. saying? Gonna look, they're gonna get down with you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes, bro. Yeah. Little uh, little um, Leon is like a, like a young doughboy. Mm-hmm. On me, me. You know what I'm yeah, it really yeah. was, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, great film, bro. Best, yeah. best one, break. Yeah. Like yeah. it's it's the it's the pioneer of a lot of good films that come after that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But that's the one. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think it's, I think it's really good. Like John Singleton went to the premier film school, so it has a it has a studio quality to it. Mm-hmm. It to me, it's well shot. It's mm-hmm. well paced. It's well written. You know, even though we gave Minister Society five black fists, also yeah. as it should, yeah. Boys in the Hood is a demonstrably better film. Yeah, Woo. You we'll know get mean? to that. We'll talk about we'll, that. We'll, we'll, talk, <laughs> we'll talk, talk about, about that. that. <laughs> we'll talk about that. We'll talk because because I see you're an extremist, bro. Yeah, I got a homeboy like yeah. that. A monster. I don't think there's a movie that's monstrously better than Men's Society. Yeah. I think there's a movie that could be better. And, and if you mm-hmm. say Boys is, that's fine. I, I'm but Men's Society had different shots, different angles, different that, actors. Yeah. That yeah. Shit was but see, that, but this is. You said monster, monster, demonstrably better. Demonstrably and, better. And, and, this no. is, and, and we'll do this on the next one, but, but this is how I argue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Like, when it comes down to it, like, if I was a boxer, mm-hmm. I'd be like Mayweather. I want to outpoint you. Right? Like, you know, I don't have any knockout points. Right? Like, you know, I'm just going to make four or five little points, you know what I mean, that make my point. So if I was to argue Boys in the Hood versus Minister Society, I would go, who had the better director? You would go John Singleton. Mm-hmm. Point. Right? Who would have the better cast? You would go Boys in the Hood. I, I don't, I don't oh, know. Yeah, 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 I don't, yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't I mean, you, you wouldn't say that... that Sam, Samuel L. was crazy. We got Jada Pekin. We got... Uh, Oh my gosh! Yeah, yeah. you got Tyre. I, I, boy, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah well, all right, we'll have to keep this rolling. Um, yeah, because yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm about to walk out of here. The audacity! <laughs> nah, we, the got, audacity. we got it, bro. Because it's, hey, Ja, Ja, let me off the pot. Let me out. <laughs> let me out, Ja. <laughs> he walked out. He's gone. He's out of here. Hey, where the saxophone player at? <laughs> <laughs> Nah, man. Hey, hey. Uh, what's his name? His name is uh. What did you say his name was today? Uh, oh, damn. Man. Ice, Ice Tone, Tone left the building, man. He's he he he's, he's outraged. Yeah. Anyhow, man. We I could talk about this for a whole other hour, bro. We 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 can't right now, man. My boy, man. Thanks An- for having Anthony me, Anthony the real man. Thank yes, you for sir. blessing us. 
Uh, we had a great conversation, but I had to do it with somebody I knew could relate to the to the to the to this film very well, such as myself as well. Um, Ice Tone is out, but he he yeah. sends his love. That's that's it for this time, man. Catch us next time on another episode of, of Blackbusters. I'm your host, Big Ja, along with Ice Tone, Anthony Darrell. And uh love y'all. Be good or be good at it. I'm out of here. Peace to the max. Pew. Blackbusters. <laughs>